Look, I'll fix it with my own two hands, I promise you. It'll run like a clock. Yeah, well, it better add do. Well, it will do. Do you really think we're trying to spike your driving test? I wouldn't put it past you. Hey, now, listen, come here. What's the sign uh, for two-way traffic straight ahead? Um, a red triangle with two vertical black arrows pointing in opposite directions. I can't catch her out on a highway coach. She's going to sail through that part. I'm take it. She's going in for a driving test. Uh, today, yes, I'm taking her. Another woman driver let loose on the roads. Women are far safer drivers than men are. It's a well-known fact. Listen, I saw one the other day trying to park in a space the size of a cricket pitch. No way could she. She had to leave it parked halfway up the pavement. Yeah, well, at least they don't bomb about like maniacs. Well, don't they? Some of these young lasses think they're Nigel Mansell. They don't bomb around like maniacs. You see, they haven't got the feel for driving. It's going to take generations. Generations. Oh, he's a terrible driver, actually. Slow as a snail. I heard that. Oh! What's all this sugar for, anyway? What's for the cafe? Alma forgot to order any, didn't she? Oh, yes. Well, she's got other things on her mind, hasn't she? Like being jilted by Mike. I know. Breaks your heart to see you. <laughs> <laughs> Be a couple of bitches. <laughs> we are, aren't we? <laughs> hey, how'd it go yesterday with Don and Ivy? Oh, so-so. Nicky weren't all that impressed. Why? What happened? He didn't want to go in the first place. I reckons Don and Ivy are boring now. <laughs> well, aren't they? <laughs> anyway, Nicky took his cricket bat. By the time he got round to playing with it, Donna dropped off to sleep. Oh, dear. Snoring, was he, with the knotted hanky on his head and his hands over a, clasped over an ample bella? <laughs> <laughs> Sounds more like Alf to me. I heard that. Oh, anyway, I've been on worse picnics. Oh, Lord. Mind you, I've been on better and all. That's all right, see you. Yeah, looks like Grandad and Grandma Brennan aren't as popular as they were, aren't they? You what? No, nothing. I was just telling our girl, you definitely know your highway code. That is the least of my worries. Oh, you're terribly nervous. No, the car's only gone and gone on the blink. Oh, well, that could be a blessing in disguise. I mean, Paul Challen's got enough trouble since his plate on. Pretty, hasn't he? Oh. <laughs> it's only a joke. <laughs> is there something going on out there? Hmm? Well, something seems to be fascinating you. Just reflecting. Wondering how much of my life I've spent watching that lot out there. What you mean here? You could have been doing something a lot worse, I suppose. Like coal mining. What? Well, they could say the same thing. How long have they spent watching you, watching them? Yeah, I suppose you're right. Anyway, how's that new girl shaping up? As I just said. Already as quick as Shirley was. And something of a perfectionist. Then what's she been doing, hiding herself in packing? Right, what do you want me money on? Checks, I'm afraid. Yes, well, it can stop there till it rocks. At least he won't be out on the razzle showing me up where he is. Yes, Vera. Ivy? Yes? Ivy, right. Let's have a look at you. Yes. Spot on, doing great, love. Did Vera really do that to us and cut all his trousers up? Yes. Have you let her? Uh, look, Josie, when Vera is on the warpath, love, it oh, takes more than their yes. jack to stop her. In fact, I reckon Margaret Thatcher would have to run for cover. She's done him a favour, hasn't she, Mrs Duckworth? Pardon? Well, no trousers, no work. He'll stop in his pit forever. Actually, Mr Sugden, I think he's getting a bit fed up. He's asked me to canvas his mates for the loan of a pair. Why don't you lend him a pair of yours? Ah, we see, I live here, Mr Sugden. I do not want Mrs Duckworth going through my wardrobe with a pair of scissors. I saw what she did to his. It was a sight that will haunt me for the rest of my life. It wasn't an act of vandalism, it was an act of emasculation. Emasculation? If Jacko doesn't show his ugly face today, he'll be pressing it up against that job centre window tomorrow. Oh, I don't mind seeing his face. What'd worry me if he'd seen his cheeks? <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. Yeah, do you not get it, Ali? What she means is the I cheeks... wouldn't even crack feeble jokes if I were you, because you're as much to blame for my present physical discomfort as Jacko is. Oh. I shouldn't be lifting heavy crates like this at my time of life. Whatever happened to the executive desk and the falling minions? Same as happened to my sunken bath and personal maid. Look, couldn't one of you two give me on with the rest of the crates? I mean, before I rupture myself for life, it wouldn't be in your best interest now, would it, Beth? Would I notice? I'll kill Jack. I will. I'll kill him, and then I'll fire him. I've made a mess of things, haven't I? You know, I should have belted Jack the minute it started getting frisky instead of egging him on for a laugh. 
Mr. Gilroy's right. My joke's out for me. Oh, I don't know. I've enjoyed it, love. And it's a bit to run yet, if I'm any judge. Isn't it a pity Jacko's not called Jacko McDuckworth? Why? Then he could wear a kilt. <laughs> oh, come on, Bet. <laughs> oh. oh, could one of you two help me uh, empty the car? Please. Well, we'll be going for Sally's driving test in a minute, Chuck. Oh. Do you know it's time Mark were here? If he does get here. Oh, he'll be here on time. He won't let you down. Hey, Well? Well, what? Oh, what happened? I haven't flipping been for me test yet, Martin. Oh, thank God. Hey, when I saw that trail of wreckage all the way down Rosamond Street, all cars, all bumps and scrapes, I says to myself, oh, no, Sally's not been driving down here, that's it. Oh, oh, give over, Martin. Now she's on a knife edge, as it is. Ah, oh, just a lad. Oh, I don't like the sounds of that, Mr Roberts. Listen, you can come and help me empty the car and stop you seizing up from being too idle. Come on. Well, we're coming for a nice lobby. <laughs> oh, Hello. Oh, Audrey, I think I just heard a car stopping outside. Oh. Hiya. Where have you been? Where's Kevin? Oh, what question do you want answering first? Well, have you fixed the car? That's another question. Oh, why is it all young fellas think they've got to be comics? Look, Kev's had to go out on a job and, yeah, the car's fixed. There's the keys. Now, what was your other question? I've forgotten. How's it running? Well, drove it here and push it, eh? Right, Audrey, I'll go home now and get changed. Yeah, I'll you go. Hey, and put something really glam on. Do you know, give the examiner chappy something else to think about. <laughs> I did. It worked like a charm. I passed first go. Go on, you get plenty of time. Well, I would have liked to practice run first, but never mind. Oh. Do you know, poor little thing, she's a bag of nerves. And all this carry-on with the car, you know, it's the last thing she wanted. Hey, it is running all right, though, isn't it? Yeah, of course it is. It's just that... What? Well, it's still pinking a bit, but it's nothing serious. Oh, fuck. Bottle of shandy, please. <laughs> what news from the nudist colony, Curly? Oh, actually, I've got a message. If he thinks he's coming, working behind this bar in just his wife's room is another thing coming. Alec or no Alec, this is a family thing. Absolutely. It would be an industrial hazard behind that bar, wouldn't it, Beth? <laughs> I doubt it, not Jack. <laughs> he wanted to know if you could smuggle a pair of yours into him, Mr Brennan. No way. You heard it? No way. Why? Don, we are just spectators at the zoo. We're not climbing in that cage with them. If Jack wants to borrow a pair of your pants, Vera will be out after our blood. Yeah, yeah, I'll take your point. Well, perhaps you could buy him a pair, eh? post them to him, anonymous lad. I never had you down as a spoil sport, Don. I really didn't. He isn't. Forget I haven't suggested it. How's Jack taking it? Is he upset? Well, he's gone from roaring anger to disinterested resignation to the abjectly pitiful. What do you mean, pitiful? He's got very thin legs and bony knees, is our Jack. He looks pitiful. <laughs> Hello, sorry I'm late. Are you? Well, not all that much, seeing as I'm a lady and entitled. Oh, is this for me? Well, actually, I bought it for another bird, but her husband turned up. Look at me. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> so? So what? You're dying to know, aren't you? But Mike Baldwin must always be seen to be smooth and cool. I don't know what you're talking about. I found out quite a lot, actually. Oh? From my many contacts in the estate agency world. Oh, I'm impressed. Morris Jones is a builder. I wonder why he had half a house brick sticking out of his top pocket. He has his own business, operating from premises in Ardwick. Good reputation in the trade, nothing Jerry built. Well, not so far. Not so far? He's only built twos and threes on odd sites. Houses, that is, like his father before him. But he's obviously getting more ambitious. How? Seems he's been buying land in Arkwright Street. Behind the factory? Well, that explains a few things, doesn't it? Does it? If he's bought that land to build houses on, I'm blocking his view. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, now keep taking deep breaths. I do when I'm feeling a bit panicky. I'm not feeling panicky, though. Well, do it anywhere. I won't be earning too much, Mr Roberts, only I'll have to start paying income tax, won't I? Yeah, well, you need to worry about that, lad, cos I won't not be paying anything. <laughs> it's stopped! Oh. Oh. oh! What's the matter with it? Oh, it won't stop! Oh, oh what am I going to do? Now. Try it again. Put your foot on the accelerator. Go on. Oh, it's no use. Oh. Come on, get out. Come on, get the L plates. Oh, 
You put the front one on, I'll see to the back. Won't Mr. Roberts mind? I don't care if he does. Oh, but what's the point in a strange car? Oh. Gary, I'll take you round the block a few times. Oh, okay. Bags would be nice, wouldn't it? Yeah, eh? well, we'll see about that. Look. <laughs> Where's my car? Now that's a good question, Mr. Roberts. Where it is can't it? have rolled off anywhere. I know it's a flat street, this. It's been stolen. <laughs> Could you read the number plate, please, on that car over there? Uh, which one? Sorry, I've had one of those mornings. The red one. Um, D897NJA. In a sack. I've been at home. Well, it's just that I noticed that your bedroom curtains were drawn. You know, I wonder if your Jack was up and about again. Yeah, well, I told him. Folk would be thinking we've had a death in family. But your Jack's still in bed. Well, it was. But he soon got up as soon as he smelt bacon frying. Oh, you are still feeding him then, Vera? Well, I left him a drop of dip in frying pan. Got all that feeding him. That's all he's getting from me. Vera, they don't treat convicts like you're treating your Jack. Yes, but convicts are human beings, aren't they? He's not. He's just a randy old mongrel. You know what they do with them, don't you? Well, they keep them chained up in kennels. Fucking whatever like this. No, well, it wouldn't be, love. Afternoon, girls. Afternoon. Afternoon. Who's that? No idea. Why aren't you out laying bricks? In? I still do. I think, well, I think the job wants speeding up a bit. <laughs> and then a many parts, then. All I need. I thought you said you'd give me a couple of days to think it over. Doesn't sound like me, though. I like to move faster than that. You really are crowding me, aren't you, mate? I am. Making me an offer for the factory. Buying out land at the back of here. Never off my doorstep. I'd say that was crowding me. Yeah, definitely. Just like to get on with the job. And what job is that? My job's building top-notch houses, which I'm sure you know. You've obviously been doing some homework. Tell me, how much land did you buy? Or is that a military secret? No. All of it. All of it? From Artwright Street, right up to your boundary wall. You really are breathing down my neck, aren't you? Man? I want you to do an emergency stop. Uh, what now? No. I'll hit the dashboard like this when I want you to do it. Right. Is that us, do you think? Yes, I think it is. Uh, pull in behind. You're not a terrorist, are you? What's the trouble, officer? That's what I'm here to find out, sir. Is this your vehicle, madam? Um, well... It isn't your vehicle. No. Excuse me, officer. This young lady is in the process of taking her driving test. I'm the examiner. I thought you might have recognised me. No, sir. If it isn't your vehicle, madam, whose vehicle is it? Uh, well, I'm just borrowing it. It, it. it belongs to Mr Roberts, Mr Alf Roberts. I see. That's probably why he's reported it's stolen. Would you like to step out of the car, please, madam? And you, sir? She's taking her driving test. I'm the examiner. Please, sir. Look, Jack, I don't care if you have to wear one of your virus frocks. I want you back here on the job. A pair of my trousers wouldn't fit you. I'm not that fat, Jacko. Now, look, just get yourself out and buy yourself a pair. 
No, I will not send you down a sub. Now listen to me, Jack Duckworth. I shall say this only once. Back here tonight or else. Knit yourself a pair. He's swinging the lead, he is. Jacko. I mean, what are we doing? Employing him, eh? We'd be better off recruiting staff in a madhouse. There ought to be television cameras down there at number nine. David Attenborough doing a commentary. Jack and Vera Duckworth. A startling case of arrested evolution. Do you think I ought to nip down there and see if he's warm enough in just his underpants? No. On your suggestion. Yes, I'm very sorry, officer. Yeah, well, my wife never told me she was borrowing the car, you see. Yes, I do realise I've uh, caused you a lot of trouble. Mm. Yes, I'm aware that uh, police time is valuable. Yes. Oh, yes, you, you would be better employed being out catching criminals, yeah. <laughs> yes, of course, I, I will make certain before I jump to hasty conclusions in future, yes. <clears throat> yes, thank you, officer. <laughs> Give you an earful, did he? You know, they've got a wonderful command over certain words in the English language coppers, haven't they? Still, they get a lot of provocation, don't they? They made me feel about that big. Yes, I could see you shrinking from here, Mr Roberts. Did they say where Sally is? Well, she's out with Audrey, I suppose. I know where she ought to be, in jail. <laughs> hey, I wonder if Sal passed the test after all that. Oh, come on, with all the coppers chasing her all over. Do me a favour. I think I'll leave the country. Yeah, I would if I was you. It's all your fault. If you'd done a proper job on that motor... I did do. How could you have done it? Conked out. Yeah, well, you can leave the country with Audrey, cos she'll need fresh digs, I'll tell you. You know, it's surprising the entertainment you can get from popping down to your local shop for a nice lolly, innit, eh? What was that? <sighs> My car, Audrey driving. <laughs> it is as well. Yeah. Reception committee. Well, I'm surprised you've got the cheek to show your face. Well, yeah, it was a pretty well thing to do, Mrs. Roberts, taking his car without. You can shut up for a start, Mark Casey. Oh, it's getting better. You passed your test, Sally. I was arrested. <laughs> well, whose fault was that? Taken to a police station. Oh, God. Did it not occur to you that I would take the flipping car? No, it did not. One minute the car was outside the shop, next minute it had gone. Isn't that so, Martin? Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I thought a UFO would suck it personally. Yeah, what did you pass your test? Do you know how far we got in your car, don't you? Just round the corner, that's all. Yeah, we know we've just seen it. But you told me it was running all right. It were, honest. It conked out after 100 flipping yards. We had no <laughs> choice. We had to take our car. A car I'd never driven before. Then she got chased by the police. And arrested. Not to mention the state the examiner was in. Because he nearly had a heart attack. <laughs> yes, but did you pass your test? Yeah, I did. Oh, it were a miracle, excellent. honestly. Excellent, I had every confidence yeah. in you, Sal. You see, excellent. Sal, you wouldn't have been feeling half as chuffed if everything had been straightforward in your past now, oh, would you? thanks, Mark. Well, Kev, aren't you going to congratulate me, or are you too amazed? Yes, I am. But well done. Oh, oh give her a kiss, for heaven's sake. The oh, girls are heroines. Give her a Come on. <laughs> oh, leave her alone, then. Oh. Well, By the way, Alfie, well, I've just noticed a big dent in the back wing. You what? Well, that police car you sent after us must have done that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, Vera. Hiya. Yes, Mrs. Duckworth. I don't want serving my little tart, if you don't mind. Look here, Mrs. Duckworth. I don't have all to right, take all right, this. All right, all right, all right. I'll serve Mrs. Duckworth, Tina. Yes, Mrs. Duckworth. Uh, I'll, I'll have a light ale. A light ale, right, certainly. <laughs> 65, please. <laughs> Thank you very much, Mrs. Duckworth. He's been very polite to her, isn't he? Yeah, he's up to something. Mm. There we are. Thank you. <laughs> Where is he? No. Your husband. Well, if you mean that right I live where he's in bed. In bed? I see. Well, will you give him this little note? It's from me. Thank you very much, Mr. Dilworth. What's in that note? An ultimatum. They won't understand that. Well, I've counted it in words of one syllable or two at the most. Why would you be writing to your Jack? Very fine, eh, that one, sir. Uh, well, Jack report for work, properly dressed by half past nine tomorrow. I don't bother coming back at all. I mean it, Alec Gilroy. Are you old enough to do it? Are you sure? You'll see, it's all got out of hand, Antipira, just like I knew it would. Well, I had to do some at didn't I? Couldn't let him get away with messing about with somebody young enough to be his daughter. You've got to do something drastic when that happens. For your pride, for your self-respect. Yes. 
Yeah, Vera. Yes. <laughs> Cheers, and uh, well done. Cheers, Sam. And I didn't mess with that car. Well, I might have believed you if... Uh, if what? If either of you had said I could drive the banger now, like we agreed if I passed my test. <laughs> but not a word. So I can only assume you didn't want me to pass at any price. But for your information, fellas, I will be driving at any price. Cheers. No, I insist I'm paying for oh. them as a thank you for, well, looking after me while I find my feet. I think I'm going to enjoy being a machinist. In fact, I know I am, and I'm not just talking about the money. Hey, remember me? I'm the girl you asked out tonight. I'm sorry. You're in a funny mood, aren't you? Am I? Didn't know you were a brooder. I'm not. Merry and convivial, that's me. Ask him. You're still brooding about that offer to buy you out, aren't you? Well, I am thinking about it, yes. Seriously? That's what's worrying me. I mean, a few years ago, I wouldn't have given it second thought. Sell my factory? No way. It'd be like, well, like cutting my head off. Perhaps you're changing. Maybe there's another bike Baldwin in there waiting to get out. Yeah, maybe you're right. Um, Josie, uh, Josie, what's his name? Sent you these. Oh, cheers, thanks. Cheers, Mr. Baldwin. Uh, good health. Not to mention well. Cheers. Stay there. Blimey, Nick, Vera, you were early. I've not been up long. Uh, no, I, I was just wondering, like, uh, has Don got a spare pair of trousers? He's got one or two pair, why? Oh, do you think he'd lend me a pair, then? They'd not fit you? Not for me, for our Jack. It's an emergency, tell her. Uh, it's an emergency. Oh, I see. I thought it was you that wanted him trouserless. Yeah, well, a joke's a joke, but it's gone on long enough now. Oh, <laughs> just a joke, was it, Vera? Does your Jack know that? Dear that, Jack, all the bits of fun that was cutting up every pair of pants to your name. Look, stop stirring it, will you? You're gonna lend me a pair of what? I'm sorry, Vera, Don's already left. So, he can't be wearing them all of them, can he? Only our Jack needs a pair for work. <laughs> them grey flannel ones will do nicely. Them's his best weekend ones. I'm not lending you them to go lugging crates of beer up from a mucky cellar in. Yeah, well, uh, oh, it'll do. Only he's got to be at work for half nine. I'm sorry, Vera, I can't go lending my husband's clothes without asking. It's not fair. Yeah, but he's not flaming my lady to ask, is he? Exactly. Sorry, Jack, you have to wait till Don gets back. Yeah, but when will that be? Tea time. Terrific. I'll have lost my flaming job by then. Well, thanks a bundle. When you need a favour doing, you know where not to come, don't you? Changing the subject. Look, it's washing your hair what does it? Well, don't wash your hair then. Well, it was all long blonde hair when I fished out. Oh, blow that, Kev. What about tomorrow night? I've told you a million times. Just rinse it down the plug hole properly when you finish. Did you or did you not make a solemn promise that you wouldn't waste that banger till I passed my test? Yeah, well, I thought that was going to take months. I didn't know you was going to get a cancellation. Well, I did. And I passed. And you promised when I passed I could drive the banger first, so I am. Look, you're being unreasonable, Sal. I've already explained to you. I've entered in my name. Well, tell him you've made a mistake. Tell him you put the wrong name down. You put Mr. instead of Mrs. Well, Wilson. I can't do that. They've got rules. It's too late to change it now. I'm down as the driver and Mark's down as the mechanic. And what am I down as? A flipping spare part? Oh, I don't know why you're making such a big issue out of it, Sal. I mean, ink's barely dry on your licence yet. There'll be plenty of other races. Yeah, and you'll find some excuse why I can't be in those, neither. You don't want me doing anything exciting, dear. It's all right for you fellas. All us wives are fit for is unblocking flipping drains. You think you'd be proud you had a wife with a bit of go in her instead of trying to squash me all the time, wouldn't you? Oh, I keep telling you, Pet, they're all the same. Do you know, they'd like us to be little nice, sat at home where they can keep an eye on us. Since when did you ever sit at home? I mean, people were lucky to find you at home in the first place. I didn't say I did. I said it's what you'd like. Hey, do you know what his idea of heaven is? Him in one armchair, me in another, and a party political broadcast on the box. Hey, Sally, does it sound to you as if my wife is hinting that I never take an over? Oh, I wouldn't dream of hinting such a thing, Alfie. It'd be a waste of time, I know that. Right, now, you're a witness. Tonight, we're going out for a slap-up meal. We're going to have wine, flowers, the lot. Now, what do you say to that, madam? Alfie, oh, love it. I... I can't. I promised Gail I'd babysit so she'd have a night out with Polly. Oh, well, fair enough. We'll go tomorrow night. That's longer to look forward to it. Oh, well, I'm glad somebody's looking forward to tomorrow night. Nay, hey, lassie, it's not that bad. You can always watch. 
I want to be doing, not watching. Watching's all right when you're old. Well, if that's the only time you can make it, 12.30, uh, Is that today? Correct. But you've got Schofield's buyer coming at 12.30. Eh? The appointment's been in your diary for a week. Oh, well, look, uh, phone him, see if he can change it. See if he can make it tomorrow. He won't be pleased. Mr Nuttall's a busy man. Well, I'm a busy man. We're all busy men. You were hoping he'd give you a good order. Look, just do it. All right, Emily? Of course. Hello, it's me. Why? How many me's do you know? Listen, how are you fixed for joining me for a spot of lunch and a progress report, eh? No. No, I haven't succumbed yet. I'm uh, allowing myself to be gently seduced. And you know what? I'm rather enjoying it. In fact, I could uh, recommend it. <laughs> well, look, uh, Jones is coming here at 12.30. It'd take about half an hour, so what's our meet you at one in the Rovers and we go out from there, eh? Yeah, OK, fine. I look forward to it. Bye. Your Jack never squeezed his belly into a pair of curly jeans, Vera. Get off, you'll go home and find you speaking in high pitched voice. No, I went to that Indian yeah. shop on Precinct. The sold towns is there. Curly won't let him eat in me down, not like some. If I didn't help you out, Vera, it's because you behave like a right idiot in the first place. You want to learn to control yourself in future. <laughs> Look, don't you understand? I've got past caring. He humiliated me with that little frolic. What's made you forgive him, then? Well, I forgive him, have I? I'll never forgive him. But I don't intend supporting him for the rest of his idle life. Yeah, so it's a bit up to just get to the Rovers on time. Or else he will be talking in a high-pitched voice. Ooh. Where the hell are you, mate? I've only got four minutes left. Not by any chance got a spare pair of trousers in there, have you, darling? Hey, have you got a licence for that? One minute, five seconds. Four, three, two, one minute exactly. 59 seconds. So I've been in Cape Canaveral in here. All systems A-OK, -okay. Houston, we have lift off. Listen, you're the last one should be poking fun, Miss, seeing as you're to blame for the whole of this stupid fiasco. Oh, come on, Alec. Fair dues. It was Jacko made all the you rummy. Know. She didn't have to go out with him, did she? Egging him on like that. Some men need very little encouragement, as well you know. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. That's it. It's had it. Hey, I'm, I'm sorry, boss, but you... You've heard about the wife having to go up with cakes, haven't you? Well, I sent Curly for a new pair, but he's, he's not back yet. Dozy Pratt, he is. I presume those are his you're wearing. Well, I didn't think you'd fancy me wearing my wife once behind the bar, you know. I said 9.30, Jack. It's gone 9.30. Yeah, but only just, Alec. I mean, you're not giving us a good shove for a matter of a couple of seconds, are you? Just... She chopped the lot up, did she? Every pair of breeches, even to your best suit, everything. Even with Vincent Clare. Oh, go on then, you can stay. Any man who gets his Vincent Clare shredded deserves some sympathy. It's going to uh, cost me an arm and a leg, boss, to replace all this, you know. I said sympathy, Jack. Any bar person coming to work dressed like Coco, the clown's lucky to get wages, never mind raises. Bye, gum Jacko. You're a narrow squeak there. Welcome back. But behave your randy little self this time. I'll try. Just think of me as a, a little bunny girl, Jacko. You can look, but you mustn't touch. Morning. Morning, Mr. Baldwin. Morning, Alma. 
what it was until just now. Oh, come on, darling. Life's too short. We're civilised adults. What? Any more? How about uh, easy come, easy go? Or all's fair in love and war? Or uh, forgive and forget? I second the last one. Oh, I just bet you would, sunshine. But, I mean, you don't have anything to forgive, do you? I mean, you weren't the one who got used and chucked aside as soon as a newer model came along. All right, be like that. If that's the way you would have played it. Right. Off. Bye. Oh! Hey, look, I'm just on my way round to your place. Right, well, I'll save you the trouble. Lead on, McRoberts. Anywhere where there are plenty of shops. Oh, sorry, but I've got Nikki today. Didn't Gail mention? No, I haven't actually asked her yet, but I'm sure she wouldn't mind me taking a couple of hours off. She knows the state I'm in. Well, come with us if you like. We'll probably go to the park. Oh, thanks, but I think I need something a bit more stimulating than feeding ducks. I, uh... I just bumped into Mike. Oh. I need to give me credit cards a bit of a bang, you know, so I'll quite likely go smashing windows. Probably is. Come on. Oh. Bye, old. Bye, bye. Why is it that women treat spending money like some miracle cure-all? Because it is. It's better than penicillin any day. Oh. oh. Emily, are you going to come across the road or are we going to welcome Jack back to the London No, I won't. Thanks. <laughs> I brought a salad. I shall stop here and catch up with some paperwork. All right. right. Oh, okay. Can I appoint with Mr. Baldwin? I'm a bit early. Yeah, Morris Jones. Yes, you were here yesterday. Yeah. You're getting to be quite a regular visitor, Mr. Jones. It's the air around here, love. Very bracy. Hello. Mr. Jones, Mr. The houses here, small gardens in front, car park. Yeah, well, what's here behind then? Uh, back in onto Arkwright Street. Small industrial units, workshops, that sort of thing. Mm. It will be very tasteful. All the same, it's a funny shaped plot, isn't it? I mean, even if I sold you this lot, there's a there's a chunk missing here, where the community centre is. Still be a fair size development, though. We can't be too greedy, can we? So I take it you're still interested, else I'd not be here. Yeah. Good. I'm interested. Ready to talk figures? Well, hang on a minute, mate. Got to get this place valued first, don't I? I mean, I'm not just selling four walls and a roof, am I? I'm selling a profitable going concern. Well, that'll be taken into account, no sweat. You'll find me a fair man, Mr Baldwin. Oh, well, this makes two of us. You know, this is a match made in heaven. <laughs> right, I'll be in touch. Oh, Emily, can you get us a list of all the money's owing to us? And can you get it by this afternoon? Of course you can. Of course you can. She's a little gem, is Emily? A little gem. Warren's curtains? Oh, no, I'm afraid you've just missed him. Oh, probably be back around three. Yes. Yes, I'll tell him you called. Sofa kept you waiting, darling. It's only just gone. Now then, I suggest we have a quick snack here and leave the champagne and celebration until tonight. Celebration? You've not done a deal yet, have you? Well, only a verbal agreement subject to valuation. Now tell me, what do you think you prefer? The West Indies or the Seychelles? Jerk. If I don't get out of this for ten minutes, I shall go bananas. I, uh, oh, I should sip, sip a couple of vitamin pills into that, love, if I were you. He likes them young, but he hasn't really got the staying power. Alma! How old was your wife, Mike, when she married you? Uh, 21. Poor kid, it didn't take her long to give you the elbow, did it? Come on, let's go, excuse me. Don't tell me you had a wife. No, let's not. That wasn't a very smart man, was it? Well, I've run out of ideas of what to do. I mean, everything I suggest, he says, no, it's boring. Hey, lad, how would it be if your granny was to take you around to Auntie Rita's? Then you could get a video, go back to our place and, and watch it. Which one? Well, any you like, I'll treat you. You could have uh, Wizard of Oz, E.T., hey, Indiana Jones. Seen them. Is that all? And Mr Dutton called and said you'd call him back. 
But I really don't think that I can get you that list of money outstanding by this afternoon. It'll be tomorrow at the earliest. Emily, do all women go a bit potty when they reach a certain age? There's a lot of work involved, Mr Baldwin. And calling me a gem isn't some kind of magic formula to turn me into an adding machine. What are you on about? I'm not talking about you. You don't throw emotional wobblers, thank God, and tomorrow I'll be fine. Good. That Mr Jones who came before, I'm sure I've seen him around. Isn't he a builder or something? Yeah, there are a few things that have got to be sorted out concerning the new flat. I thought that was a Weatherfield docks development. Well, he's connected. You know what these firms are like. They've got fingers in all sorts of pies. You just get on to figuring out who owes us what and how much. Oh, hello. Baldwin. I've been for two job interviews this week and so far I've heard nothing. Well, get on the phone, chase them up. I'm not sure I want to chase them up. One was in a supermarket, the other one was in a wholesale fishmongers. Yeah, and what's wrong with that? That's not how I pictured myself when I was doing all that studying. I thought something meaningful, something great, something to get me plugged into the high-tech 1990s. Yeah, well, I suppose gutty and cod wouldn't really come into that category, would it? I'm sorry, girl. Look, I'm at my wit's end. I mean, all he wants to do is come back here. Well, he'll just have to amuse himself here till I take him home. Oh, don't worry, man. It's not your fault. Mom. It's difficult with everybody these days. Mum, Mum, they're going putting. Can I go with them? Can I? Well, are you sure you don't mind? Nah, probably give me a better game than Curly, won't you? Any hey, day. Hey, they don't call me the Sebi Ballesteros of Weatherfield for nothing, you know. Why? Can I, Mum? Say yes, please. <laughs> yes, all right then. Go on. Right, see you. Really? Come on. See you later then. Bye. 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 Do you know? That's the first time I've seen him smile all day. Well, I can understand it. He used to be with the lads. He's sick of being around women all day. Poor kid. Oh, oh with us, are you? How long for this time? Well, I just went upstairs to get an aspirin and I lay on the bed for five minutes because my head was banging. <gasps> you would not believe what a fool I made of myself today. I could put my head in a gas oh. just thinking about it. <laughs> Fetch us two tears with your girl, love. Oh, I don't know. I need what? my family. Oh. Oh. Sit down. It doesn't make sense stopping us all the time. We've got orders to get out. Well, Mr Baldwin said it might only be for a week. Well, that makes even less sense. What the hell's he playing at? Oh, I've really no idea. He said something about uh, structural reorganisation. Uh. Well, tell him it better. I'd only be a week. Else Vera will reorganise his structure. Uh. It's very handy with a pair of scissors, is Vera. <laughs> Oh, come on, Curly. What do you want me to do? Go on, get the Uber for you. I like to do things properly. I know, but you can get that one in blindfold. It's easy peasy. Easy peasy. <laughs> All right, clever clogs. Let's see if you can do any better. Hello. <sighs> Ready? Yeah. <sighs> yes. That's a four, isn't it? It was five. It was a four. You had two girls when there was dandelions were in the way. Yeah, you did. He's right. Oh, all right, then. It's not my fault there's flipping dandelions all over the place. Though. I mean, you don't expect weeds on a putting green, do you? Yeah, but no cheating. We've got to set the kid a good example. Yeah, set a good example. All right, OK. Said Nicholas. Yeah. Five. See? Right, you are go, Nicky. Go on. It's good, this, isn't it? Yeah, fantastic. Yay. Well done. One. Nice one, Tiger. <laughs> Ta, Dad used to call me Tiger. He showed me how to play. He was brilliant at this. Hurry, next hole. All right. Come on. Come on. Come in. What was your husband like, Mrs. Fairclough? No, lass. No, it's all right. I don't mind talking about Len. Though for the life of me, I can't think why Sally would be interested. Oh, she's doing research into married men. I suspect so she can start a movement to abolish them. Oh, I thought you young women these days are got it all taped. I mean, we didn't have the luxury of quality in my day, you know. Yeah, well, we haven't got it in my day, neither. Not where some men are concerned. Oh. Well, all I can tell you, love, stick to your guns. I used to with Len. 
Did you always get your own way in the end, though? No. But we used to have some interesting arguments. Oh, thanks, Al. Uh, ta -ra, ta -ra, see you. Oh, oh, hello. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so, Al's trouble. Oh, half here's Larry, thank God. The lads took him putting. You should have seen his little face. Right, now I'm off to Gale, so I've come to remind you take something from the freezer for your tea. Fish fingers tonight, tomorrow, steak Diane. Oh, heck. Oh, you didn't think I was taking it local chippy, did you? When I take my wife out, I take her out in style. Oh, Phil, love, I'm sorry. I can't go. I promised Alma I'd go with her. Well, we said we were going. We talked about it this morning. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, love, but, I mean, she begged me. The poor girl's practically suicidal. I mean, how could I say no? Oh, sorry. Come on, up to up, lads. Yeah. Hey, Just tell him to come and cheer us on tomorrow night. Yeah. Since we need all the support we can get. Well, I don't mind. <sighs> who's, who's going then? Oh, the stars of the team. You've got the driver, you've got the mechanic, and I dare say the team mascot might be allowed to tag along if she behaves herself. So, give her the rest, eh? Yeah, that's what I will be doing. Tell you what, why don't you put a little nodding dog in that wind and you can do away with me all together. <laughs> Just shift her, some of these. Cheers, Tina. Oh, a lot of people think that what Derek does is very frivolous, but, well, I don't agree, cos mighty oaks from little acorns grow, I tell him. And he could work his way up to selling really artistic lines, like lovely glass paperweights or pottery figurines. Oh, I've always had a thing about pottery figurines. <laughs> My Aunt Dee, Dee used to have this one. It was two lovers on a swing, and there's a little girl. I positively coveted it. Emily? Hmm? Oh, you're as bad as Rita. You both got this habit of not listening to a word I say. You'd think I talk nothing but rubbish. Oh, I'm sorry, Mavis. I was thinking about the factory. Oh, well, if Mr Baldwin's problems are more important than your best friend's husband's. I said the factory, Mavis. I think he may be selling up. Oh, I doubt that. Mike Baldwin likes to be cock of the walk. <laughs> anyway, why should it bother you, even if he does? I mean, well, I'd have thought at your age you were more than happy to retire. Oh, not that much older than you are, Mavis, but that's entirely beside the point. I'm fortunate enough not to be dependent on the job there, but most of you men are. Following. <laughs> Uh, Coming, glad you could make it. You said it was important. <laughs> With me, business always comes first. Man after hey. my own heart. You know, Morris, don't you? I do indeed. Nice to see you again, Miss Prescott. Well, I hope you're not going to let me down, Mike. Now, why should you think that? Scotch? Oh, yeah. We made a gentleman's agreement this afternoon. We made a verbal agreement. Gentleman's <coughs> verbal, either way in my book, it's binded. I'm not going to renege on it. As a matter of fact, I've got a bloke coming to value it first thing tomorrow. Let us see you don't let the grass grow. Only with you asking me round here this evening, I thought maybe there was some fly in the ointment. I don't like people who go back on their word. I'm glad I was wrong. Well, not entirely wrong. Cheers. Do you want to Cheers. see Cheers. There is one little uh, winged creature in the sticky stuff, but it's nothing that can't be sorted out between two uh, gentlemen. Oh, yeah. Something you forgot to mention. Like factories built on an oil well, you want a few more million on the asking price. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's funny you should say that. No, as a matter of fact, it's something you forgot to tell me. Mind you, I can understand it's slipping your mind, what with all the excitement. I told you everything. I even showed you a plan of what we're proposing to build. What more do you need to know? Uh, yes, you got confirmation from the council that they're selling you the community centre. The missing chunk. So you will be sitting on a very valuable plot of land. Which will make it even more valuable if and when you get your hands on the missing piece of the jigsaw. Which happens to be your factory. Exactly. I see. Well, you're a businessman. I dare say you play your cards close to your chest when the occasion requires. Yeah, I do as a matter of fact. I bet you're a dab and it poker and all. Happy moments. Must have a game sometime. Mm. So, now everything's in the open. Not even a joker left up my sleeve. Where do we stand now? Well, I'm going to sell you the place. Like I say, I never go back on my word. But you can take the figure you first thought of and double it. Right, sweetheart? Oh, absolutely. And then add a couple of noughts for good luck. And the building is freehold? Yep. 
built in? 1971, I bought it in 76. And it's what, a brick construction with steel panelling? Well, I don't know. You tell me. And there's no sprinkler system installed? No. Ventilation, air conditioning? Well, I think a couple of windows will open if you push them hard enough. place an order and put us back on overtime. I don't know why you keep going on about overtime, Vera. You're always first to moan if you have to just run away. So it's always nice to be offered it, just so you can turn around and tell him where to stick it. Uh, anyway, what's going on with this no overtime business, eh? Uh, well, that's Mr Baldwin's decision. Emily, Emily, come in here a minute, Excuse would you please? Me. Do you know she always sides with him? Have you noticed? Lives on the same street as us, but always sides with the boss. Emily, this is Mr Craven. He's doing evaluation both on the business and the building. Now, you don't have to know why. Just make sure he gets everything he wants, which is, um... Oh, profit and loss accounts for the past five years and details of the current state of trading. You've already raked those out, haven't you? Uh, well, yes, Then I... if you'd like to take Mr Craven along, and if you want anything else, just give us a shout, all right? I will. Oh, Emily. Not a word about this to the troops, all right? If they want to know why he's measuring up, say it's uh, for redecoration or insurance. I don't want them getting any ideas. Hey, you with me? Yes. Terrific. whether to have some more highlights put in. What do you think? Yeah, they'd look nice. But just mm. down there. Yeah. Oh, hi, Curly. Hiya. D don't look so worried. Alf is in the back. Oh, right. I, I just wondered, do you know what the plans are for tonight? What, what time's everyone setting off? Uh, the meeting at the Rover's about six o'clock. Right, I'll see you there then. Well, you might not, Curly, because I don't know if I'm going to go yet. No? What's the point? They won't let me drive. I'm sure they'd rather I went anywhere near them. We didn't go and watch. Uh, look, I'll have to go. I'll right, see you. Oh, hey, hey, yeah. I say, just a minute. What's that Curly doing his disappearing act again? I didn't really notice. Making himself scarce before I can ask him for that rent he owes me, I suppose. Do you know, I don't know he's got the cheek to show his face in here. Yeah, well, he's gone now, so don't go getting yourself in a state. I'm not in a state. I'm not in debt, neither. Not like some folk round here. Oh, yes, I know. It's terrible. So, are you going to go and watch Kevin, then? Well, I don't know if he wants me to, Audrey. All them cars. It's a man's world, isn't it? Mm. Well, I'm going to be in a ladies' world because me and Alma are taking ourselves out for drinky poo. Well, you must be hard up for company, that's all I can say. She's as dizzy a woman as I've ever met. Yes, that? Alf. Yeah, it's not to do with me, though, is it? No, Alf. Oh. Do you know, I sometimes wish he'd take up banger racing. <laughs> or round the world yachting. Now, they're away for months on end, some <laughs> of them blokes, aren't they? <laughs> Bye. Bye. <laughs> I know what my mistake is I'm not more mysterious. I mean, let them make all the running. I mean, on the other hand, I mean, what if they all run in the opposite direction? I don't know. Oh, do you know, I sometimes say, why bother men? Who needs them? I mean, nuns always look happy, don't they? I mean, have you ever seen a miserable-looking nun? <laughs> Can't say as I have, no. Well, I reckon they know the answer. I mean, take tonight. I mean, your ma and I, and we will have a really good matter. Now, if I was going out with a fella, I would be a by now. I mean, what if he makes a pass? I mean, even worse, what if he doesn't make a pass? Oh, no, you know, I think I'm well out of it. Oh, well, don't you? I don't think I'm best qualified to advise. A widow with two small children? No, 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 I suppose not really. I'll, um, I'll just clear them tables. What do you reckon it's worth, eh? A million? Two million? Not quite. But I'll be able to give you a better idea when I've been through these figures. Well, if you're not sure, go on the top side, eh? And if the bloke who might be sending this to can afford it, or at least he'll have to afford it. I'll bear that in mind. Have you uh, got everything you need? Oh, yes. Mrs Bishop was very helpful. I should hope so, too. That's what I pay her for. Here. You didn't say what you were doing to that lot out there, did you? I mean, I saw him giving you a bit of a grin. I assure you, we provide a completely confidential service. Yeah, OK, I OK. I just, I just wondered, that's all. Right, then, I'll uh, lead you through the minefield. <laughs> Visitors leaving. 
Uh -huh. Off then, are you? Yes. Uh -huh. Are you coming back or have you got all the measurements you wanted? Oh, I think I've got it. Look, just get on with your work, all right, Vera? Well, I'm only trying to be friends. Yeah, like. yeah. Not giving out to work, is it? No, I might do it more folks started asking. Oh, meaning me, I suppose. Well, you did used to be the shop steward. Used to be, Vera. Let's face it, Mr. Bowen doesn't want to tell us his business. He don't have to, does he? Mark it, Harry! Merry Poppins! Look, it is our business. It's our jobs. When somebody starts crawling out of the tape measure, that's the first sign that the strange is coming. Uh, excuse me, Mr. Bowen. Yeah. Only with, uh, you know, what's everything happening with stopping overtime and that, uh, we wondered if you were planning on making any changes at all. Really? Yes. Well, is there anything you can tell us? Yes. I'll tell you what you can tell everybody else, and that is, it's business as usual. All right? Oh, well, yeah. Yeah, thank you very much. My pleasure. It's lying. What did you say, Vera? Me? Uh, I didn't say all. Did you? No? Yes, though. Tell you the truth, I'm a bit wary about this night out with Alma. I mean, you know what she's like when she gets going. They might Baldwin <laughs> this, might Baldwin that. Don't tell me. I work with her. Ah, oh, yeah, I know, but you get paid for listening, don't you? Me? I'm doing this in my own free time. <laughs> <laughs> now, sweetheart, what do you want me to do? Oh, just... <laughs> Excuse me. Nicky's mum, but we've there. got something to ask you. What? Can I go with Martin and them to the car racing tonight? Oh, Nicky. Please. But it's for grown-ups. It's not for little lads who've got school. Oh, well, no. You haven't got school. So can I? Martin says I can. Hey, no, no. Martin said you had to ask your ma first, didn't he? Well, he's not had his tea yet. Oh, but... we'll give him his tea. Won't we, Alfie? Hmm? Give Nicky his tea. Yeah, well, if you've got time to make it before you go out with Alma Sedgwick. I've time. I might even make some up for you and all if you stop being so grumpy. So can I? Well, looks like I've been outmanoeuvred, doesn't it? Go on, then. Oh, thanks. There you go. Are you sure you don't mind? Nope, I don't mind. Why should I mind? Thanks. It's all right. Besides, it gives me someone more intelligent to talk to than Curly. <laughs> <laughs> How's things at home? Have you and Vera got it together again? Well, she stopped putting my clothes up, so I suppose that's a step in the right direction. Oh, good. I wouldn't want to have done any permanent damage. You could always try it again, would you, next time? You must be joking. <laughs> yes, lads. Can I have a pint of bitter and a uh, coke, please? And a coke. Yeah, what's on the agenda for tonight, then? We're going banger racing. Yeah. Well, I'm not. I'm just watching. And you're driving, are you? I'm more important than that. I'm the mechanic. You need something expendable for driving. Oh, it is. Yep. Hero or lunatic, only time will tell. Yeah. Kevin, sell, what are you having? Uh, just a couple of orange juices, please. Two orange juices. So, this is it, eh? The pits. I <laughs> beg your pardon, is somebody casting aspersions on this public house? <laughs> no, it was just a, just a joke, you know, about motor racing. Mm -hmm. Oh, I believe you this time. Are you coming then, Sal? <laughs> yeah, I've got nothing else to do, might as well. Hey, look, come here, you. You don't have to come, you know, if you don't want. I'm coming because you want me to. Yes, and I do. And because, well, you said I could stop with you at the track and that I can drive you there and I can drive you home. Yes, I know, I know. Oh, Kev, I won't let you go on your own. Yeah, well, I was beginning to wonder. Oh, look, if you two sit down, I'll bring you a drink up. Oh, OK, thanks. Hey, you're not supposed to consort with women before yeah. the race, you know. Slows your reflexes. You yeah. leave him alone, his reflexes are all right. Large scotch, please, Alec. Dry martini and soda. Well, then, what sort of day have you had, eh? Quiet. How about you? Have you decided whether you're going to sell or not? Uh, yeah, I'll tell you all about it later. When I see ah, it. love. Oh, I'd better get you a drink as well, would you? Yeah. Well, go on, then I'll have half, please. Cheers. And a half, please. <laughs> Hiya. All right, there. Right. Listen, I've got uh, Nicky Tilsley waiting in the car. No one minds if he comes, do they? Oh, yeah. Good, cos he's coming anyway. He can drive if he wants. <laughs> oh, get him cold feet now, are you, Webby? I hope you got him well insured, sir. Him? It's the car I'm worried about. <laughs> <laughs> well, the youngsters seem to be in rather high spirits. Mm, I gather they're going banger racing. Ah, is that where they drive round and round till they crash? No, love, I think that's the M25 you're thinking about. Mm, whatever it is, is rather them than me. And a bloke in to value the factory today see that I'm not being diddled. And what did he say? Well, he said he can't say anything until he's done his sums. Said he'll have a figure tomorrow. <laughs> then it's all a question of whether Mr Jones can come across with the readings. And what about your workforce? How do they feel about all this? Oh, they're all very, very happy. No problem. You mean they still don't know? Well, we don't want to upset them, do we? We can do without that aggro. 
Now all we want is for everyone to keep stum just a little bit longer. Then they won't even know what's hit them. Cheers. Clear of all the mucking noise. Uh, well, no, I'm going to stop with Anne. Well, it's only if you're doing good, darling. You want to get with the rest of wives and girlfriends, get a proper view. Oh, but Kevin, you promised me. I didn't know, did I? Yeah, but I should have. I'm sorry you got there. for ritual desecration. I mean, normally we treat cars with great reverence. I mean, they go bananas if you get so much of a scratch. <laughs> but here, all the taboos are out the window. They go banging into each other and they don't care. It's all very, very liberating. All oh, right, break it, if one of them's yours. All right. All right, mate. All right. <laughs> Oops. Oops. <laughs> so, uh, what would you like, then? Oh, I'll, I'll have a G&T, please, yeah. yeah. Two gin and tonics, yeah. too. <laughs> Mind you, because, I mean, it wouldn't worry me if it was here. I mean, I haven't got anything to hide. Oh, here yeah, she is, the woman of my dreams. Oh, now Vera's with her, too. Hey, hey what should you? Uh, can we have two bottles of lager, Jack? Listen, yeah. Josie did say she's coming, didn't she? Yeah, and I told others as well, but I doubt they'll come. They're that pathetic, that Matt Baldwin get away with murder. Oh, I do. I detect a little trouble brewing with the little man with the fat wallet. One pound ten p for you, I believe. That's right, lovey. And we are not trying to cause trouble for anybody, Jack. Oh, uh, well, how would you feel, eh, if somebody come round here measuring up? For what? Well, we don't know, do we? But it's like when Oak's going to happen, like Channel Tunnel's going to be built or a new shopping arcade, first sign is somebody around with a tape measure. Do you know, I, down, think, down. I think it's the feeling of being used more than anything else. You know, wind and dine until this blonde bit comes along and then suddenly just chucked away like yesterday's newspaper. Well, she wish we go then? Have you got any ideas? Oh, well, I tell you, I know a nice, quiet little pub over the top, just off the Bolton Road. Oh, oh never been up there. Yes, let's try. <laughs> Mike used to take me there. Oh. <laughs> I don't want to uh, sound rude, Anna. What? Well, 
for someone who says she's not interested in Mike Baldwin any longer, I mean, you don't have to keep talking about it. Oh, I'm very sorry, I'm sure. I don't mind listening. But honestly, I think your best policy is to forget him. Put him out your mind. There are other fish in the sea, you know. Yes, but I mean, why do the ones that I always land turn out to be sharks? Just have your confidence dented a bit, that's all. Oh, I suppose you're right. Mind you, I might have done a while letting get through to me like that. You know, I was all ready to take a bow of chastity. Oh! <laughs> no, don't do that. I mean, not yet, anyway. <laughs> Wait till you get wed again, then you may want to take a vow of chastity. <laughs> <laughs> What damage you've done then, eh? Alright, so, what do you think? Yeah, you're alright. Alright, oh, Fifth, I thought that was brilliant. I would have been happy just to get back in one piece. Oh, Fifth, you know, you're not going to regret it. Oh, well, thank you. Thank you. Oh, well, thank you. 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 Thank you.
No, sorry, Emily, but you can probably help me here. Well, if you've got a mind to. I'm sorry. Well, uh, Bet, can I have some more drinks in, love? What's Baldwin got up his sleeve, eh? Because there's summit going off across there, well, isn't there? I, I'd really rather not talk about it. Perhaps if you ask Mr Baldwin... Well, no, yeah, but he won't tell us, will he? Oh, well, in that case, I don't feel that I can. Oh, oh so well, there is summit going summit, on, then, is there? Yeah. Hey, girls! Are we right? Come here. Yeah. There is summit going on. Well, come on, tell us. Look, we won't let on it. Were you that told no, us? No, no, sorry, no, no, I'm sorry, but no, I, I really can't. Look, Emily, we're mates, aren't we? You don't have secrets from your mates, especially these that you've no. lived alongside of as well. Now, look, what's going on? Look, yes, I cool. can't tell you. you Please, can't. you'll Come have on. to excuse me. You're not just going to lay. So, uh, who's paying for these? You? But furniture, well, do you, uh, do you make it or what? Import it from Italy, mostly. Oh. So, of course, I have to spend a fair amount of time over there. Oh, do you know, I love travelling, don't you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> what does your friend do? <laughs> All sorts, love. You wouldn't believe it. <laughs> Tell you what, let me buy a drink. What would you both like? Well, oh well, I'd, I'd, uh, I'd like a gin and tonic actually. And your friend? Oh, Audrey. Audrey? Uh, I'll have a gin and tonic as well, please. I'll give you a hand. Right, back in a minute, ladies. Oh, hey. I do happen to be a married woman, you know. Well, there's no harm in having a drink. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, I mean, there's no harm in staying for a bit. Anyway, you were the one who said I should look for another fish in the sea. Yeah, no, I don't think you're going to catch one tonight. <laughs> Car's gone. No way. No oh, way, it's just not here. Listen from the young lady. She says, you hope you've enjoyed yourselves and that you'll also enjoy pulling the trailer home. What? You mean she's took the car? Drove for about ten minutes ago. And then? I don't believe it. It's now what? Emily Bishop. To do with work? Oh, I don't know. I don't know what could be so urgent as to bring her around here this time or not. Emily, come in. I'm sorry if it's... Uh... Oh. Hi. Oh. Well, I... I know I'm interrupting, but, well, I... I just have to make one thing clear, Mr Baldwin, before I have to set foot in that factory again or speak to anybody that works there. What? Well, I don't exactly know what you're planning on doing, and I haven't come to ask. But I am not going to lie to people, telling them that they've nothing to worry about, when, quite frankly, I suspect they might have a great deal. Well, what happened? Someone been having a go at you? What happened is that I've been put in an impossible position when it comes to talking to my neighbours. <laughs> you mean I've been? Oh, yes. I mean, they suspect there's something going on, but they don't know what, and they're trying to get me to tell them things that, things that you have said I mustn't tell them. What I'm saying, Mr Baldwin, is that I can't... I won't tell lies on your behalf or anybody else's. Yeah, you're all right, OK. And I'm sorry if I've disturbed you, but you can tell them all the lies you like, but please don't ever again ask me to do it. Good night. I see. Looks like it might not be so easy after all. Oh, so it wasn't because I was driving. I mean, you weren't trying to prove a point about equality in marriage or anything like that. Well, were you? You haven't got a clue, have you? About what? Not about anything. You just haven't got a clue. Look, I know me and Mark was stranded like a couple of lemons wondering how the hell we was going to get home. Just because you got it into your thick skull, you was hard done by or something. Well, I had a very nice drive home, actually. Oh, God, I'm dead there. Chuff for yourself. Do you know, it was nice not being treated like a zombie. Changing gear when I thought it was right to not having anyone screaming at me because I wasn't doing it just when they thought I should. You know that sort of thing. Yeah, but you left us stranded, so we nearly had to pay for a flipping tow home. That could have cost us 30 quid. It's only because Mark got his mate onto it that we got home at all. Well, we're lucky that, wasn't it? Look! Come on, Sal, stop it, eh? Stop what? Stop being so flaming smug. You ditched us. I mean, you weren't even bothered how I did in my first race, and I did all right as well. Oh. I thought you might have been there to cheer me on. Oh, my hero. Oh, shut up, Sal. I'm glad you did well, Kev. Yeah? Yeah. But keep treating me like a lump of grease and I'm never going to get excited about this, honestly. But what are you talking about? I'm happy to drive you there, Kev. I can cope with being treated like a cretin by the man on the gate. I'll even stand at the winning post like a bottle on a prize stall if it makes you happy. But you cheated me last night. Well, you couldn't have gone in that race. You would have got murdered. There was a ladies' race. Oh, 
Oh, that's what all this is about, is it, eh? You wanted to go in the ladies' race. Well, what do you think? Well, why didn't you say? Because I didn't know, because you didn't tell me. Either because you thought I was too useless or, oh, it's only Sally, it don't really matter. What makes you think you can have all the fun out of that car, Kev? What am I, a flipping dish rag? Best bit of advice I ever heard about wives. Keep it well served and poorly shot. Yeah. Didn't do you much good, did it? Holiday season and screws knocks the overtime off. He does it on purpose, you know, to get the workers down. He can't do it for long here. He's got orders as long as your arm. Well, what's he up to then? If he's got orders, why is he no overtime? Yeah, well, badness, that's what I say, because he knows folk need it. Yeah. So we'll have a miserable holiday instead of having fun. Just so he can sit there smirking. He doesn't think like that, Vera. No, he doesn't think about us at all. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Emily, have you got a minute? Sorry, Vera, I'm just a little bit late this morning. Would you excuse me? Ah, oh, good morning, Emily. Good morning, Morgan. And before you do, don't. Sorry? Apologise. Oh. You were perfectly within your rights to come and see me last night. You're in a very delicate situation. I know. I understand. I'm just not prepared to lie, Mr. Borman. Well, there's no need to. There's nothing to lie about. But we all know there's something going on. It's perfectly obvious. What am I supposed to say when I'm asked? Emily, in this job, blokes come up with all sorts of mad ideas. Nothing will come of this Jones bloke's ideas. You, I mean, you could, you could bet on it. Are you saying you're not selling the factory? No. I'm saying it's 90% unlikely. 95% unlikely. And even if I do, I mean, no one's going to lose out. Jones isn't going to throw that lot onto the dole queue, is he? Then can I tell them that? Emily, trust me. Whatever you hear now isn't worth a monkey's because nothing's settled. Now, I know it's difficult for you, but uh, sit on it, will you? Just for a little bit longer? OK. Last the land of smiles. Uh, it's probably the most miserable street in England. Well, it may not be Northumberland Moor or Holy Island, Tracy, but it could be a lot worse. How is it done? Listen, you, you've just had a fortnight's holiday. One of the reasons for having a holiday is to stop people moaning. Besides, what could be better than returning from a delightful holiday back to the bosom of your neighbours and friends? Oh, great. No. You're lucky to get back with your cases, a uh, pile like that. You know you've got a cord dangling. No, I didn't. Thanks yeah. for pointing it out, Percy. You know, there's more serious accidents caused by things flying off cars than you give credit for. Did you have a good holiday, then? Yes, thank you, Percy. Now, about you, young Tracy, I bet you were glad to be home, aren't you? Come on, Tracy, love, let's go and put that kettle on. Excuse us. Yeah. Where was it you went to, exactly? Northumberland. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, you'd go past Catholic Camp then, wouldn't you? Uh, well, yes, yes, we did, as a matter of fact. Did you know I was stationed there for a short while? Well, I suppose I should have guessed, shouldn't I, Percy? Yeah, one thing missing. Why don't you do some black pudding? It's the best part of a fly up. Oh, do you think I can face black pudding when I come in of the morning? It's bad enough fried eggs. Oh, well, as long as you're not being healthy. I can't stand for being healthy. <laughs> <laughs> How's Nicky? Shattered. Went Banaka racing last night. Oh, yeah. Ten o'clock before he was in bed. Oh, I bet he loved it, didn't he? Loved it. Martin took him. Oh, it's a good lad, that Martin. Mm. Not many lads his age that saddle themselves with a kid for the evening. It's what Nicky needs. A bit of male company. <laughs> Join the club. <laughs> We do well. <laughs> Quite like them, actually, didn't you? Well, you wouldn't have to put bags over the red. <laughs> <laughs> that Terry was dead struck on you. Oh, get on. Of course he wasn't. Why did he take your phone number then? Because I asked him too stupid. Oh, he listened, I was off when he got back. He passed off in front of the town. <laughs> he tried to be all stroppy, but he hadn't got the edge. <laughs> Listen, I told him it was just you and me having a quiet matter. I could have stayed all night, actually. Well, play your cards right, girl, and you could. Hey! 
I'm a respectable grocer's wife, you know. No, you're the wife of a respectable grocer. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, now come on, Emily. Oh, see, when is it home? It's uh, Mr. Baldwin's accountant here. Oh, uh, Mr. Moneybag says. So, what's he doing in here? I honestly don't know, dear. And, and if I did know, it's highly unlikely I'd be at liberty to tell you. Oh, well, uh, it's off in her. Don't you tell? An insurance brought yesterday and an accountant today. What the heck is he up to? Maurice Jones, his name is. He's buying up all the spare land round here. He's brought all that lot out the back as far as Arkwright Street, and he's got plans for that, this place, and the community centre all in one chunk. See? What plans? Oh, houses, uh, shops, a whole new community. Should be nice. Hmm, should be. How do you feel about it? I feel I could be sipping honey before long, Roy, my son. So you're not exactly averse to the idea, then? Well, would you be? Had the value in yesterday, but I'd like your ideas on it. Yeah, well, what you want from me is the value of the business as opposed to the fabric. Yeah, that's yeah. right. You know, I get nightmares about that lot out there looking at me through this glass. Do you know that, Roy? So, dependent on what I come up with, you'll either sell or not. Decision's already been made. I'm selling. But no one need know that until the deal's been done. At least of all Jones. All right, Roy? Right, now, don't drop that, Nicky. Just give it to Mr Sugden. Well, that's a champion tea cake. Look at that. Well, how do you like our new waiter, Mr Sugden? Well, I'll tell you this. He'll be doing you out of a job. Well, he spends so much time here, I thought I might as well put him to work. Uh, uh, Nicky! Come here, love. You know you'll get drummed out of the waiter's union. You're supposed to wait for your tip, didn't you know that? Oh, yes. Put your hand out, then. There you are. Thank you. Good lad. Bye, you. Hey, he looks a picture of happiness. Ooh, don't you be fooled. He's in a right mood today. Late night, I think. That and me being the wrong sex. Oh, supposed to be with Pauline today, but she got fed up with him. And strangely enough, my man didn't want him either. Well, good news is he'll grow out of it. Bad news is, of course, while he's growing out of it, what will he grow into? See you, love. Oh, oh. thanks. Ta <laughs> Hello? At uh, Jim's Cafe? Terry! Well, how did you know to ring me here? Well, I don't remember giving you my number. Yeah, I think even Tracy enjoyed herself. <laughs> yeah, yes, even she saw the wisdom of spending a holiday in beautiful countryside rather than the departure lounge at Gatwick Airport. Anyway, how are things at the office? Any, uh, any crises? Go on, Tracy, admit it. Northumberland wasn't so bad, was it? It was great. Now, should I give this pen to Amy or Samantha? Well, I thought you wanted to keep it. I do, but they're both going abroad for their oh. else, so I should get a decent present back. <laughs> well, no panics, I'm glad to say. Yeah. I think I'll give it to Samantha. She got me a birthday card. What's that? It's a present for Samantha. Present? Don't you mean investment? Stupid. Where's that respect we used to give our parents? Gone with the crack round the head they used to give us. Yeah, there's something in there. Recorder's still alive and kicking there. Oh, so it seems. And I, uh, I don't suppose there have been any more juicy leaks from the council coming in while you've been away either. Ah, oh, no. Is it over, Ken? Honest? I promised you on holiday, though. Yeah, well, promise me back here. No more dealings with Wendy Crozier. No more leaks. And no more council expose. You know, we should never have let Bowling get shut around a puff like he did. We're stuck now, aren't we? I mean, if he is up to something, we've no union, we've nothing. Union never did hope for us. Well, it's not going to do now, that's for sure, are you? Hand it for him, love. Oh, sorry, Betty, I was miles away there. <laughs> All right. And do I join you, Sue? Are you still scrapping? <laughs> hey? Come on, Martin, sit down. Uh, Your punches start flying, just drag us apart. Are you joking? Hey, I can handle Kev. I've got no chance with you. Oh, so you've sussed through this tough one of around here, have you? Kev, it's just coming round to the fact that maybe I've got a point of view as well as he has. Oh, brilliant. How did you get him to do that then, Sal? 
I just shared in the justice of my cause. Oh, you taking a notice. You show me the hairs on the chest. A true, a true. Hey, lads, I better go. I'm going to be late. Oh, well, late. See you later. See you later. See you later. Right, you're off. That's your work. you agree? No, listen, he phoned, honest. What? Did I tell it you not in dead, kids? Oh, I did. Yes, you did. You're very meeting out your hands. Uh, yes, ladies, what's your pleasure? Right, hold you, what you want. Well, I think it would better be a gin and tonic seeing as we're celebrating. Ah, what are you celebrating? Yeah. Oh, why is your face lit up? Well, sometimes when folk are celebrating, I hear them four little words, you know what? The one for you, Barman. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, it's a gin tea and a white wine. Right. So, listen, listen. He's, uh, he's taking me out tomorrow night, and you have got to come too. Me? He's bringing Dave, and if you don't, well, Dave will be a loose break. I can't. No, I can't do that, Alma. Oh, you can. I mean, tell Alf you're at night school. I don't go to night school. Of course you do, Audrey. Use your imagination. Oh, when Bowman goes round smiling all the time, there's all this trouble. It's changed, Vera. I know it's changed, but I'm damned if I know what. Uh, well, you know does know, don't you? Oh, Emily Fleming twins, sir. Uh, she knows all right. She's full of it. But I'll tell you something, whatever happens, she'll be all right, because she's right in with him, isn't she? Look, I'm, I'm sorry, Vera, but I couldn't help overhearing. Well, I think it's really most unfair what you say about Emily, because I happen to know that if the worst comes to the worst, she'll be in just as much trouble as you are. <laughs> Big obstacle, here it comes. Oh, listen, I've got to get on anyway. Would you believe it? I just got my hat on to go for my dinner. What happens? What? Phone rings every flipping time. Oh, dear, that is hard. Lock <sighs> off. Anyway, I'll see you later. Yeah, right, love. And don't forget imagination. Bye. Bye. What was all that about? Oh, I don't know. Uh, who was on the phone then? Hey? Oh, Jimmy Dobson. There's a Chamber of Trade bash tomorrow night. I wanted to know if it was going. Tomorrow night? Yeah. And are you going? No, it's a stuffed shirt, do. Last thing I want. Anyway, I'm fainting from hunger, so I'm going for my dinner. Oh, hey, if Sally needs any pound coins, there's some in the house, near the telly. Uh. Well, I'm going in there and have it out with him. You can sit where you are. Look, I am sick of it. What's happened? What's happened? We stood in the Rovers when Mavis Riley crawls in, saying she knows what's going on. Who's Mavis Riley? Oh, she's nobody. Hey, yo! Come here, hey! Yeah, tell your cronies, tell your mates what's going on. But you won't tell us that it matters to... What are you talking about, You Vera? know. Oh, you shut up, Vera. Well, she does know. Look at her stood there all smarmy. I don't know what you're talking oh, about. Oh, yes, you do. Blabbing your mouth oh, over there. And you, you told us you didn't know what was going on. I don't. You oh, don't. don't. I pay you lot for screaming at each other. Well, we know what you're paying her for. What's going on? What do you mean, what's going on? You know there's something going on, Mr. Baldwin. Why are you keeping us in the dark? What have you said, Emily? I haven't said a word. Sure, yet. because until there is something going on, there's nothing to say, is there? What there is is work as usual. Understand, Vera? Ivy, now get on with it. Cheers. See you, big fella. Sit down. I want to come with you. I'll see you tomorrow. I promise you. All right. I want to come with you. Oh, shit, I've got the point, Nicky, but, you know, I've got things to do today. I'm going out with Curly. I'll come too. Nicky, stop bothering Martin. Just let him go. I want to go with well, him. Come. Now, stop it. Look, Curly's going to try and get himself a job today. I'm just going along with him to hold his hand. I can hold his hand. Yeah, but we'll probably end up going in a pub afterwards, and you can't go in a pub, can you? Eh? I can. Oh, just go, Martin. Will you ignore him? See you, big fella. Sit down. I don't want you. I want Martin. Well, you can't have him. Now stop it. You just sit down there, and I'll get you a coke. Do you know what? your grandchild. Oh, I will be glad when he starts school. Oh, he's bored, poor man. Well, I wish you get bored somewhere else. Alison, tomorrow you can make it, can't you? 
it's come from heaven, this has. Some dinner Alf has been invited to. Now, he reckons he doesn't want to go, actually, but he will. <laughs> do you know the things I do for you, Alma? You're causing me a lot of hassle, though, mate. How's that? Well, my work was. You know how cows sense when it's going to rain? Well, they sense that something's going on. You mean they've started lying down? Yeah, more or less. <laughs> I'm getting a lot of flack, though. That's what business is all about, isn't it? Yeah, but there could be trouble. I mean, if they find out I'm selling up and cause a lot of fuss, how will that affect the council's decision? The council aren't interested in your workforce. They're interested in numbers. I'm putting up brand new industrial units, plenty of opportunity for employment. They won't worry. Don't tell my staff that. I'm not telling your staff anything. That's your job. Exactly. Mind you, you haven't got it yet. I'm just waiting to hear the price. Oh, we're getting to that. But I'll tell you something. It's going to cost you. That's what they all say. <laughs> nah, it was a good break, Emily. Just what the doctor ordered. But what happens, as soon as we come back, Ken goes charging into work. I mean, I don't know. He rings them up, they tell him there's no problems, but he's got to go in and find some. He's very tied to his work, isn't he? Oh, excuse me a minute, Emily. Tracy, Auntie Emily's here. What? Turn that thing down and come here. Auntie Emily's here. Well, you didn't need to call her down. Oh, it's either that would be deafened. Hiya. Hello, Tracy. Did you have a lovely holiday? Yeah, thanks. We got your present. Did you? Where is it, Mum? It's in the kitchen. <laughs> it's nothing to write home about, Emily. Well, the thought is much appreciated, whatever it is. We got it in Berwick in this old-fashioned baker's. Ooh. That looks wonderful. Actually, it is rather nice, Emily. They had a little mm. cafe there and we had some slices of one ourselves. And I know that Mr Sugden will love it. Hey, we didn't get it for Percy. We got it for you. I know. We'll enjoy every bit of it. Oh, thank you. Can I go back <laughs> upstairs now? Yeah, go on. Ta. See you, Auntie Emily. Yes, I'll see you soon, Tracy. Are you all right, Emily? <sighs> I'm just so worried, Deirdre. If I don't talk to someone, I think I'll go mad. Well, come on then. Talk to me. Vera reckons that his moon just from curtains onto some other line, you know, but yeah. I think it's more serious than that. Emily knows something. She cracks on she don't, but she does, you know. You know, I'm sick and tired of hearing about the strokes your boss pulls. Well, I suppose that's how he becomes a boss. Is it uh, you can be a boss and still be human? Look, what does it cost him to tell you what he's up to, eh? There's something missing in that He rules by fear. All right, eh? Have him one. Uh, I'll put your money away. It's my shout. No kill? Nah, he's gone home, so I'm up. Went for the job today. Didn't get it. Yes, Gavin. Uh, yeah, sir. Two pints, please, Bessie. Oh, OK, don't. So, uh, what was the job? Uh, some retailing in bathrooms. Oh, and they pulled the plug on Curly, eh? Never mind. I've been thinking, you know, what you could do. What? Well, it's a perfect line of business for you. I mean, the climate's dead right now for setting up your own business. Incentive schemes, educational training, and wouldn't cost much investment. I've oh, got no money. Well, you Cheers. took Nick up on the up. other day, didn't you? Cheers, Bessie. Yeah, so? So, there you have it. No, they have what? The perfect line of work. Constant demand, no capital needed, and no need to get your hands dirty. Well, tell us then, for God's sake. Child-minding. I just don't feel right going out without you. Yes, don't worry, Alfie. Come on. You deserve a night out with the lads. I mean, you know what the doctor said. What? Well, no work, no play. I mean, you ought to let your hair down. Relax from time to time. Have a drink or two. Well, I can't have a drink or two if I'm driving, can I? Well, don't leave the car and take a taxi. I mean, that's what they're for. Well, what will you do, sitting at home like Cinderella? All number of things. I'll probably do some ironing and have an early night. Will you miss me? Oh, wow. Well, come on, you know I will. And I'll be there waiting when you get back. Oh, well, it'll be worth going then, won't it? <laughs> <laughs> Evening. Evening, Mr. Baldwin. Percy. Evening, Mr. Baldwin. That's Mike. A large scotch and uh, whatever Percy wants. Oh, uh, large scotch. Thank you very much, Mr. Baldwin. Very and, kind. Uh, and a half for you, is it, Percy? Yes, please. Yeah. Uh, large scotch and an half for Percy. Is it? Is that it, then? Of course that's it. Nobody else, is it? 
Right. right. You know, I must say, Mr. Bowen, as much as I value with the time to myself, I'll be glad to get back on crossing duty as soon as these holidays are over. I've never been a chap, you know, that finds it difficult to find yeah, something to do. Excuse me but... just a minute. I won't be a sec. Thank you. Ivy. Yes, Mr. Bowen. You must be feeling a bit in the dark. Well, yeah. But tomorrow morning I'll have a word put in the picture. Okay. Oh, thanks, Mr. Bowen. <laughs> Why don't you tell her now? Eh? I said. Why don't you tell her now? Don't. Well, what's it got to do with you? It's got a lot to do with me. She's, she's my wife. Well, do I tell you how to drive your taxi? No. <laughs> There's something going on over there, and whatever it is, it affects Ivy. It affects the lot of them. Oh, you seem to know more about it than I do, Sunshine. But don't call me Sunshine. Don't, please. Why don't you tell her now? She's your supervisor. She deserves to know. And she's going to, tomorrow morning. All right? All right, Miss Marley. Thanks a bunch, Dom. Yeah. Thanks a bunch. Ivy, I am sick of that fella behaving like a little Hitler. Oh, well, it's very hard for you, isn't it? You must see him all of twice. A month. Sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I couldn't believe it, Dom. Um, I looked at my watch and the traffic in the town centre was murder. Ah, oh, don't worry, love. I expected you about me. Yeah, am I that predictable? <laughs> don't answer that. Ah, no major scoops in your absence, then. Oh, no, alas. Reported a talk to the Evergreen Club. No, no, Wendy Crozier is off the scene. I think that major scoops are temporarily a thing of the past. They're not, you know. Hmm? Are you ready for this? What? Mike Baldwin is selling the factory. What? Virtually certain. I have it from a very reliable source. Not the council? Oh, come on, Ken. You think I'd be telling you about it if it was council? You mean we're getting rid of the poison dwarf? <laughs> Hallelujah! Where's he going? Costa del Crime? Oh, search me. And uh, the other bit of news is he's selling to a builder, name of Jones. Development? Looks like. Well, wouldn't you know? So, what the hell do we get dumped on us? Morning, Mrs. Brennan. Morning, Percy. I hope you didn't lose any sleep over that little outburst last night between your husband and Mr. Baldwin. Uh, no, no, I didn't. Uh, well, if you ask me, he was right out of order. He only did what any husband would have done under the circumstances, Percy. Not your husband, Mr. Baldwin. Oh. And you don't want to be fobbed off too easily, you know. Not even got good reason to think your jobs are on the line. All right, all right, Percy. Look, Mr. Baldwin's having a word with us this morning, and that's good enough for me. What's going on? What's Baldwin been saying now? I tell you, crossroads. Think on what I said. It's your livelihood he's playing games with. What's the about? Ah, come on, baby. Who are you? I thought you were supposed to be getting them pots done. In a minute. Now. I'm reading, aren't I? Look, you can do that later. Now, come on, shift yourself. Why do I have to do it? Because as soon as I get sorted out, my feet aren't going to touch the ground this morning. Well, I'm meeting Paula, aren't I? Look, you're not going anywhere till you've got them pots done. Now, come on. I'm on holiday. Tell her, Dad. Oh, 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 no. Leave me out of it. Thanks Bye. a lot. You, uh, you are going to the town hall, I take it? Oh, yeah, as soon as I can get out. Oh, no, Ken. I'm sorry. You want to know what Jones and Mike Baldwin are cooking up? Well, you don't find out from me. Well, I can hardly ring Jones, can I? I don't see why not. He's one of your biggest advertisers. Well, exactly. I don't want to risk putting his back up, do I? I'm quite sure if he'd wanted it made public, he'd have been in touch by now. I right. still lose Mike Baldwin. Oh, yeah, yeah. He'll be about as amenable as an angry wasp. See you later. Bye, love. Sausage, bacon, egg and tomato. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, still all systems go for tonight, eh? No problem. Actually, I think Alf is rather chuffed. I'm not going with him to this trader's do. I've saved him a fortune. <laughs> Hairdo, new outfit, shoes, handbag. Do you know when I think about it? I'm a fool to myself. Oh, don't think about it because I am relying on you. Look, don't worry, I'll be there. But I am telling you one thing. Mm. I am not stopping late. I mean, once I've got you settled with that Terry, you're on your own. Uh, no, 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 no. Have this one on me. Oh. <laughs> so, what are your plans for today? Uh, well, I thought I'd take a stroll around the estates, whiz over to Paris for lunch in the private jet. And with a bit of luck, get back for the afternoon shift in the filling station. I thought you did nice. That mate of mine wants to do a swap. No mice to complain. So, if Nick has got any plans for today, he'll be disappointed. Well, he will have, but he'll just have to be disappointed, won't he? Yes. Ever since you took him banner racing, he thinks he owns you. Good time. I'll have to take him again. 
Well, if you do, make sure it's on your terms. It can be a little devil if he doesn't get his own way. Yeah. Well, I have noticed. Still, I can handle Nicky. Ah, better go. Mm. I'll see you. See you. Sorry. Hey. What? If you do get to Paris, don't forget the duty fee. Oh, no danger. So that. Can you can you spare me for two minutes? I've just got to make a quick phone call. For a change. Come in. <laughs> so, what are you two planning now? Sir? Well, don't tell me we're talking about the weather. We were just discussing the arrangements for tonight, if you must know. I see. No, you don't. You don't see it all. Look, I am just providing the transport and a little moral support, that's mm. all. Well, you just make sure it stays moral. I'm capable of looking after myself, you know, Gay. Look, I'm telling you, I will be tucked up in bed with my library book before Alfie's got round to the port. Right, girls, see you. Oh. And I reckon you should march in there and tell him straight. Say, listen, come on, come clean, or else you're not getting another tap out of us. Oh, well, that's brilliant, that is, isn't it, Vera? If he's oh. thinking of putting back, that's really going to put an helmet on it. Right, you lot. If you can rest your tonsils for a minute, I'd like to have a word with you. What now? We're on a tea break. Would well, you want to hear what I've got to say or yeah. not? Yeah. 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 Yes, yes, of course we do. Right then. Now, it seems that you lot have spent most of your working hours these last couple of days putting two and two together and coming up with 105. Now, any rumours you may have heard about me getting rid of this place is premature. No deal has been made, there is no deal on the table, so as far as you lot are concerned, it's business as usual. Well, that's not the way it looks to us. No. Yeah. What about them fellas that's been poking round? Yeah. Oh, hang on a minute, let Mr Bowen have his say. Thank you, Ivy. Now, I don't deny that an offer has been made on this place, and I don't deny that I have looked into it very carefully, but I repeat, as of this moment, there is no deal on the table. And contrary to what you lot think, and as the matter has arisen, I have considered your future. Only God knows why I should worry about you lot. Oh, aye. And what do you mean by that? It means that your jobs will be safe even if they do pull this place down. How do you, how do you pull it down? No if, Ivy. I mean, I, I said if. I mean, with all this uh, redevelopment going on, I mean, who knows where any of us will be in a couple of years' time? How can our jobs be safe with no factory to work? Well, well it's all hypothetical, yeah. isn't it? Because it all comes down to what I just said. No deal has been made on this place. So the sooner we get to back to work in normal and forget all these rumours and gossip, the better for all of us. Now then, I make it. You've got five minutes left of your tea break, and then I want to see those machines running white hot. Got it? Well, that's taken a load off my mind, I can tell you. And some folks still think the Earth's flat. See you, bye. Mrs Barlow? Miss Crozier. Did you have a nice holiday? Uh, yes, we did, thank you. Very nice. I uh, take it there haven't been any panics while I've been away? Nothing we couldn't handle. No more leaks to the press? No, of course, there wouldn't be, would there? I can assure you, Mrs Barlow, that if there had been, they wouldn't have come from me. Oh, I believe you. I think I've made it very clear where you stand. Goodbye, Miss Crozier. Yes, Ken. Oh, oh, just a half yeah. Jack. Right, oh, right. So, uh, what did your Lord and Master have to say, then? I think you'd better ask Mr. Bowen about that, Ken. Yeah, well, uh, is he selling up, or isn't he? You've heard that, I know. I'd rather not talk about it. Simple enough question. And I'll give you a simple enough answer. Ask Mr. Bowen, not me, Ken. Uh, come on, this is terrible, I reckon. <laughs> What's up with you? And what blabbing to him, Don? He's only after a story for that paper, is. Oh, oh tell me. So, um, it's here yet? Eh? Jenny! About her exams. Oh, tomorrow. Oh, fingers crossed. Yes, thanks. Mind you, Betty, it's not going to be easy whichever way it goes. Hey? Eh? Well, I mean, if she doesn't get the grade she wants, she's going to be about as much fun to live with as toothache. On the other hand, if she does... 
come October, she'll be away. Yeah, see what you mean. You'll miss her, though, won't you? You say that again. You do want her to pass, don't you? Yeah, of course I do. I hope she sails through with flying colours. I mean, after what that kid's gone through this last year, she's due for a bit of sparkling. Uh, <laughs> yes, Mike. Thank you, Lord. Large cuts, please, Jack. Reckon I've earned it this morning. Mm. Rough morning, then? Oh, no, not rough exactly, no. Look, are you waiting for a quote for that rag of yours? Why don't you just come straight out and say it? I'm listening. All right, I'll tell you exactly what I told the girls. Whatever rumours you may have heard about me selling the factory are untrue. And should I sell it in the future, their jobs will be assured. End of quote. All right. That's not the way I heard it. I got my love. And what did you hear? That you were about to sell the factory to a builder. You're calling me a liar. <laughs> just telling you what I heard. I must admit, it didn't make much sense, certainly, in light of what you just told me. I mean, I would have thought that uh, a curtain factory to a builder would be about as much use as a bag of cement to a drowning man. Unless he had other plans for it, like replacing it with something else. But then you're categorically denying that, aren't you? I've told you the situation. Anything else is speculation, and I'm warning you. You print one word about me that's out of place in that rag of yours, and I'll take you to the cleaners. And believe you me, nothing will give me greater satisfaction. <laughs> Are you sure I look all right? Oh, come on, you look a million dollars, lovely. Do you know, I'm beginning to wish I were coming with you. Oh, well, there's still time, you know. No! No, thank you. It's not my sort of do at all. I'd only spoil it for you. Come on, go and chat about the price of comforts to your heart's content. Well, I don't feel right going without you, love. I'll feel lovely. You're doing me a favour, sweetheart. Honestly, all I want right now is a good long soak in a hot bath. Oh. So go on, enjoy yourself, and don't give me another thought. Yeah, well, I won't be late anyway. Be as late as your life, just in... Enjoy yourself. All right, see you later. All right. Turn up. Right, it's fine. Ah. Come on, Bye, Thank you. Thank you. So, you builders don't believe in roughing it, do you? What's the point of having it if you can't enjoy it? I'll drink to that. I still remember the time when there were five of us sharing the one bedroom. I reckon you know what I'm on about. Mm. Being brought up in East End wasn't exactly a bundle of fun either. Cheers. Cheers. We've got a lot in common, you and me, Mike. Yeah, I suppose we have. You make your own luck in this world. So, down to business. You've taken a closer look at my figures. Yes, I have. Uh... And? And I'd say we were still wide of the mark. How wide of the mark? Oh, I reckon about, uh, 50 grand. Oh, well, we seem to have the top line and the bottom line. All we need to do now is come to an agreement somewhere in between. Bearing in mind I know how much that site means to you. And bearing in mind you won't get a better offer. Better chance to settle down to a life of luxury you've been working all your life for. But it won't be on the table forever, Mike. I need a decision and I need it fast. How fast? A week. Ten days at the outside. You're right, that suits me. Should be in your interest as well. People are beginning to ask too many questions, particularly one person. Well? Barlow. Ken Barlow? Yeah, right. I think I can handle him if it comes to it. Debbie's now. Right, OK, love. Don't be late back. Oh, Dad, it's summer holidays. And Debbie's asked that he'd run me back afterwards. I don't care. Mum won't go on like you do. Look, your mum's out, isn't she? I'm telling you, don't be late back. See ya. Bye. Come on. Bye, right, bye, love.
Oh, hello. It's me, Ken. Oh, hi. I didn't expect to hear from you. <laughs> no, no, I know. Look, um, I need to talk to you. Oh, I, I don't think so, Ken. It, it could be more than my job's worth. I saw Mrs. Barlow at the town hall this morning and she made it very clear to me where I stand. One false move. Look, look, I just want you to confirm something for me. Make sure I'm on the right lines. I get the story myself. Oh, I don't know, Ken. Well, tell me just me. I'll tell you what it is I want to know, and then if you don't want to help me, fine, I'll respect that. Well, Mrs. Barlow... No, as far as Deirdre is concerned, I stand to lose just as much as you. Now, if I didn't feel it was safe to meet... I wouldn't even suggest it. Just trust me. When? An hour? That pub near you? By the river? I'll be in the car park. I'll see you there. All right, but I'm not promising anything. I'll see you in an hour. Bye. <laughs> Mrs. Bishop says she'll be about five minutes. Can I get you a drink? Uh, no, I'm all right, thank you, Mr. Sutton. Look, honestly, if it's inconvenient... Inconvenient? Of course it isn't. What made you think of that? Oh, it's just that it seems to be my role in life these days to be an inconvenience. And what's brought this on? Oh, well, it's Derek. He's up to his eyes in paperwork, you know, filling in his orders and things. Well, the man's got his job to do, hasn't he? I mean, he'd have something to complain about if he had no work at all. Yes. I suppose you're right. It's just that, well, he, he doesn't seem to have any time these days for, well, anything else. Well, that's understandable, isn't it, eh? What is? Well, I mean, you getting married so late in life. I mean, you might have a head full of romantic ideas, but he's not in the first flush of youth, is he? Well, neither of you are if it comes to that. I mean, you've got to make allowances. Are you sure I can't get you a drink? Positive, thank you. Well, I've had a Poor Curly, I feel really sorry for him. After all the hard work he's put in. Yeah, he'll get some it, eventually. I mean, he's got qualifications and that now. He's chucked away two years of his life, if you ask me. What, are you an authority on this or what? No, but I know loads of lads doing very nicely, thank you. Not past an exam in their lives. Oh, well, like you, you mean. Martin, hello, Martin. <laughs> what? Phone. Oh, it's hard, Jack. <laughs> and uh, while you're on your nine legs, it's your Thanks, show. Yeah. Cheers, sir. Uh, hello? Yeah. Hello, Gail. Oh, yeah. What's up, Look, Peter, if he's told you your jobs are safe, I don't know what you're worried about. Now, let's just have a nice, quiet drink in peace. I'll tell you what worries me. It were Baldwin that said it. He'll not sell up, Vera. He needs that place. It's his life. He needs that place like a boil on the bum. Look at the way he treats us. I think Ivy's right. He's one of life's tyrants, is Baldwin. He's never happy unless he's bossing somebody about. Oh, come off it, Don. Don't crack on you, believe, Baldwin. Not from where I'm standing, Vera. You don't seem to have a lot of choice. Glad he could make it. I'm not sure Mrs. Barlow would agree. Look, let's just forget, Deirdre. You're taking a hell of a risk, Ken. We both are. I happen to think it's worth it. Now, just trust me, OK? Right. Where are we going? Somewhere a little less public than here. to drag you around here, but I can't do a thing with him. He just refuses to go to sleep until he's seen you. Is that Martin? Yes, it is. Been up and down them stairs like a yo-yo for the past couple of hours. I'm sick of it. Hiya! Hiya. Come sit down, you. What have you been up to, then? I wanted to see you. Yeah. Well, I won't want to see you if you go on like this, I'm telling you. I look at your mum, and she's worn out. Not being very fair to her, are you? I wanted to see you. <sighs> Look, Nicky, we've had some good times, me and you, haven't we, eh? Yeah, mm. football. Right. And banger racing yeah. too. Can we go again? No, we can't. Not unless you do as your mum tells you. She's been working all day. She's not finished yet. She's very tired. You're a big lad now. You should be helping your mum. So come on. Off you go, to bed. Can you read me a story? <sighs> 
Um, yes. I can read you one story, then I'm going. All right. Great! I'm sorry, Martin. I just didn't know which way to turn. Uh, forget it. I'll take this. Fancy dancing? Sorry? I said, do you fancy dancing? Oh, well, if it's all the same with you, I think I'd rather stop here and take the weight off my feet. No, I wasn't going to come tonight, you know. Then Terry said Alma would be bringing you along. I didn't reckon I'd see you again. Not after the other night. No, well, it were a bit of a surprise for me and all. It's not my kind of place, really, you know. Well, you could have fooled me. I've had a great night. Well, don't get me wrong, so have I. It's just that I seem to be at my best in more intimate surroundings. More of a one-to-one -one situation. Oh, what a coincidence. So do I. Well, maybe next time. So there is going to be a next time? I reckon I could be persuaded. Tonight's not over yet. True. What do you fancy next? I reckon I'll have the same again if you ask him. <laughs> A gin and tonic and a whiskey, please. <laughs> Them two seem to have hit it off again. Yeah. Well, I hate to be the one to have to break up the party, but uh, I've really got to get back. Well, just one more drink, eh? I'm only on mineral water. Well, just one more mineral water, then. All right, go on, then. But just the one. Hey, and while you're up there, give Dolly Daydream a nudge, will you? Get her back into the land of the living. <laughs> Here comes love, John and Dream. Small scotch and mineral water. I think Audrey's getting a bit worried about the time. I told me to tell you. So? You've told me? <laughs> Hi! Yeah. Oh, I bet you thought I'd left the country, didn't you? I gather it was a long meeting. Oh, it shouldn't have been, honestly. Some of them fellas go on like flipping records once they get on their feet. You wouldn't believe they could get so worked up over a thing like a, a surface water drainage scheme. The, uh, the kettle's just boiled, if you fancy oh, a drink. Oh, no thanks, love. If I have any more coffee tonight, I'll be swimming in it. Tracy in bed, is she? Uh, just about, yes. Uh, she's been to Debbie's. Oh, so you've been on your own all night? Uh, no, no, not all night. Oh? Well, I've been doing a bit of detective work. Trying to get to the bottom of this factory business. Well, I had to, didn't I, seeing as I couldn't find out the easy way. All right, Ken. Anyway, I, uh, I got what I was after, eventually. I now know exactly what Jones is up to over there, why he needs the factory so badly, how much land he owns around here, and how he plans to develop it. Unofficially, of course. So, well, you decided to speak to Jones, after all? No, no, I, uh, I didn't get it from Jones. Well, then who? Oh, no. Not her again. Not after you promised. <laughs> Hang on a minute. I haven't said where I got my information from. You don't have to. If you know as much as you reckon you do, then there's only one person you could have got it from. <sighs> don't think you'll be hearing from him again tonight, anyway. I'm sorry, Martin. I really am. I know I shouldn't have given in to him. I'm sorry. After the day I've had, I just couldn't cope anymore. Hey, forget it. It's all sorted now, isn't it? Best thing you can do is get a good night's sleep. Just look done in. I feel it. <laughs> I must look awful. No, you don't. You just look worn out. Letting things get on top of you, aren't you? Good night's sleep. You'll be as good as new, I promise. The <laughs> first thing in the morning, you'll be there in the calf, giving us customers hell as usual. <laughs> Thanks, Marty. <laughs> what for then? Just being here. Saying what you just did. That's what you miss when you're on your own. When you wonder where on earth you're going to get the strength for another day, it's when you need someone to say what you just did. You're right. It'll all look different tomorrow. I know it will. Hey, 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 hey. I 
It wasn't just Nicky that needed somebody, was it? Hey? But don't let yourself get in this state again. And just ring up. Any time. Just bills. You can have a couple of them if you like. No, thank you. Right then, I'm off. Keep your fingers crossed for me. And my toes. Thirteen years of school and my old future's down the drain thanks to one exam result. Now, don't go talking like that. Mm. Just because you didn't get the grade you needed to get you to Leeds doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Two Bs is a good result in anybody's book. Well, why did you have to fail biology? I don't know, love, but you have. And no amount of soul search is going to change that. You've just got to work on what you have got. Now you get off to school and see what they reckon, okay? We'll talk about it when you come back. Yeah, I suppose you're right. I know I am. Now go on, scoot. See you later. See you later. I won't tell you again, Nikki. Now come on. Do you hear me? Never go, aren't you? Oh, Nikki, you're not even dressed yet. I'll get dressed after. I'm trying to get to work, Nikki. Why do I have to get up so early? I'm tired. Yes, and whose fault's that? I mean, if you'd have gone to bed at the proper time last night instead of playing me up half the night, you wouldn't be tired now, would you? I wanted to see Martin. Yes. Well, after your little performance last night, don't you be surprised if Martin doesn't want to see you anymore. Martin didn't mind. He's taking me swimming today. I better get my things ready. You get your breakfast. You're not going swimming till this afternoon. I get a move on. I've got to get your aunt Auntie Pauline's. Do I have to go to Auntie Pauline's? Nikki, don't start. Auntie Pauline's very good to you. Now get on with your breakfast. I wish Martin could have stayed all night. Breakfast. Mm. Now keep this for you till dinner time. All right, sweetheart. Bye. Bye. Oh. Morning, Mrs. Roberts. Morning, Morning Mr. Roberts. Oh, very good. Are you feeling all right? Well, why what? wouldn't I be? Actually, I'm feeling a bit fragile. Uh, to be exact, about as fragile as the cut glass chandelier. <laughs> hey, I take it you had a good night then. Too good, it seems. <laughs> oh, good morning. Oh, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Look, if you two are going to start your punch and judo routine, will you please do it somewhere else? With him. He's got a battalion of little men in hobnail boots doing a clog dance in his head. Do you know, for one horrible moment, I thought he'd got back before you last oh, night. No. Mind you, a very close thing. You're only about ten minutes after me. So he's no idea, then? Well, uh, better than that. I mean, what am I supposed to think when he comes rolling home, drunk as a skunk, with his floozy in tow? How many more times have I got to tell you she was not a floozy? She was the wife of the President of the Chamber of Trade. Well, that makes it all right, does it? A perfect, respectable woman. She just happened to be coming this way and she offered me a lift in a taxi. And we didn't even speak to the woman until I was on my way home. Oh, my heck, Alf, you must have some hidden talents. Yeah. Look, if I was knew I was going to get all this aggro, I wouldn't have gone in the first place. I'm going home for half an hour. I'll try and get rid of this headache. Bye. Do you know, Audrey, I don't know how to do it. You go out with another fella and it's your husband that feels guilty. Right, uh, I'm off now, love. I, uh, I might be in the Rovers at lunchtime. What you do with your time is no concern of mine, is it? Oh, come on, we can't go on like this. Oh? How can we go on, then? Proclaiming trust in each other? Loyalty? Look, I've explained... Look, Ken, you promised me you wouldn't see that crozier woman again, ever. I had no choice. Oh, yes, you did. You had a choice, all right between keeping your promise to your wife, who was daft enough to believe you, or going back on it when it suited you for God knows what you got out of it. Now, what's that supposed to mean? I don't know, Ken. I don't know what anything means anymore as far as you're concerned. Look, I needed to know what Jones was up to. Then you could have called Jones. What, let him use me? <laughs> let him tell me a pack of lies to suit his own hands? Oh, no. No, the only person who could have told me what I needed to know was you. 
So if you're looking for a root cause for all this, you need to look no further than your own precious principles. Don't you talk to me about principles. Look, Jonesy's that far off getting his hands on the factory and, as I understand it, changing the lives of a lot of folk round here. And they have a right to know what's going on and I have a duty to inform them. No matter who gets hurt in the process. There's just no point in talking to you, is there? You know, you're getting just like all the other councillors. It's like trying to conduct a conversation with an answering machine. I'll see you later. What's going on? Oh, nothing, love. Well, nothing to bother you anyway. But it does bother me. You and Dad are always arguing. Yeah, well, there's just a few things that we don't see eye to eye on. It's council again, isn't it? That does have something to do with it, yeah. If it were going to cause this much trouble, I don't know why you wanted to do it in the first place. Look, just drop it, will you, Tracy? I've already had more than enough from Ken without you joining in the chorus. I'm still going shopping this afternoon. I said so, didn't I? I know what you said, but that was yesterday. Yes, we are definitely going shopping this afternoon, all right? So I'll be back here by 12. Great. Well, if you want my opinion, you're out of your mind. Oh, there was no harm done. No, not this time, no. What would have happened if you'd have got in 10 minutes after all? Well, I didn't, did I? Oh, come on. I was just doing our a favour, making sure she was all right without terror. Mm. Well, I hope Alf sees it that way. If he ever finds out what really happened. Oh, dear, really. You can't. I'll have to go. My partner's giving me some very funny looks. Yeah, I'll see you later. Bye. Welcome back to the land of the living. Look, I'll be, I'll be out for an hour later. Well, that will make a change. What, with Terry? That was him on the phone. Get on, I'd never guess. Do you know, I'd have thought you'd have been pleased for me. Oh, I am. Just do me a favour, will you? Keep my man out of it from now on. Don't worry. Do you know, I think your mam is quite capable of looking after herself. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> how's, uh, how's the invalid? Huh? Alf. Oh, he'll live. That was, that was Terry on the phone. I'll oh. meet him at dinner time. Uh, Dave, uh, Dave sends his best. Does he? Oh, come on, Audrey. He's a decent fella. I don't pretend he didn't enjoy his company. That is history now, Armour, all right? Oh, dear. Dave will be very disappointed. Yes, well, that's his problem, isn't it? Look, you're on your own from now on. I've got a husband, remember? And I want to keep it that way. That's a sign you don't see much of these days, Mrs. Fairclough. What's that, Percy? Me and me Finney. Somebody taking pride in their property. Oh, how long does it take to do this? Oh, sorry, Percy, I forgot to set stop. What? No time at all. And have you noticed how many folk uh, today are quite happy to plough through all sorts of rubbish to get to the front door? So I pass your inspection, do I, Percy? We always did, Mrs. Fairclough. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. As soon as you set eyes on a purse, you can tell where they've got that pride in themselves. I bet there's not a thing out of place in that woman's house, I said. And that's my kind of woman, Mrs. Fairclough. Well, I'll have to watch that you don't catch me black lead ink great, Percy. That'll really turn you on. Eh? See you, Percy. All right, ta-da. Ta-da. Morning, Mr. Sugden. Morning, young lady. Hiya. Hello. Hey, you look a bit chirpier than you did when you went out. Well, things are never as black as they seem, are they? Take it you've had some good news then. Well, nothing definite, but I mean things are looking more hopeful. Mr Cartwright reckons I'll have no problem finding a poly to take me, not with the grades I got. Well, there you are. Mm, so he's given me a list that I want to start writing today. Yeah, I'm sure you'll get what you want, though. Well, I hope so. I just hope I can get where I want. Oh? Have you somewhere in mind? Well, yeah, I think so. I mean, there's a couple of others from our year applying, so I will have a brilliant time if we get in. And um, where would that be, then? Brighton. Brighton? Yeah. Hey, so don't uncross your fingers for me yet, eh? <laughs> I'll go put kettle on. Uh, is that it, then? Uh, yeah, for now. Yeah, well, if I'm not here when you want the other half... 
I'll have gone to the West Indies on the profits I'm making out of you two. Uh, just tonic. Uh, yes, Tar, and make sure the bubbles don't make too much noise. Please. Oh, like that is it. Exactly. Like Must that. have been a good night, that's all I can say. Oh, it was. Eh? Look, look, Audrey, can we please just drop it, eh? I wasn't the one that brought it up. I know I came home a bit tiddly. A bit? Yeah, and I've explained what happened in the taxi with the President's wife. So you keep telling me. And I have apologised. Alfie, who's going on about it now? Hey. As far as I'm concerned, it's over and done with. Oh. Finished. All right? Oh, right. Well, come on, Alf. Don't keep us in suspense. What did you get up to last night? I'm telling you, Baldwin were in a very funny mood this morning. Well, he's not said no to me. Oh, it wasn't what he said, no, it was more his manner like. You know, as if he were in a world of his own. <laughs> Listen, don't knock it, dear. If it keeps him off our backs, it's fine by me. Yeah, well. Still reckon he's up to Summer. Summer is not letting on to us about. How many more times do you have to be told? He has said he is not selling the factory. And even if he did, our jobs are still going to be safe. Yeah, well, been thinking about that, I know. About what? Well, look, if he's definitely not selling the factory, why did he say our jobs would be safe if he did? To reassure us, you daft bat, what we all rumours flying round. Hey, what's happened to that boss of yours? He's not exactly busting in a gut to get in here as often as he did, is he? So you've noticed, have you? He's avoiding us, that's what he's doing. Noticed? Of course I flaming noticed. My takings have halved since you lot started giving him aggro. Oh, it's not your takings we're bothered about, love. It's our wages. Tracy, what are you doing up there? You'll have it dark. Coming. Double eight two seven. Oh, right. Hello, Mr. Reynolds. What can I do for you? Ah, oh, um, well, I did have other plans for this afternoon. Oh, I see. Well, if it's as important as all that. And you can't even give me a clue. I see. <sighs> yeah, well, if you insist. I'll see you then. Bye-bye. How do I look? Oh, fine. Ah, uh, listen, Tracy, that was Mr Reynolds on the phone from the council. He wants to see me first thing this afternoon. But you promised. Yeah, I know I did, love, and I'm sorry, but he didn't give me a lot of option. That flipping council again. Look, tomorrow, I promise, all right? You promised today. Oh, I know I did, love, but it can't be helped. Tracy! <laughs> Um, I just wanted a quick word with Martin, uh, if I'm not interrupting anything. Yeah, what can I do for you? Well, it's more a question of what you can do for Jenny. Hmm? You know about her exam results. Yeah, yeah, tough luck, that. All that hard work she put in. Yeah, well, not the end of the world, though, is it? Well, now, that's just what I keep telling her. I mean, she's been down to school today to see what her prospects are, and according to them, she'll have no difficulty getting a place in a poly. Oh, well, there you go, then. So, uh, if you do see her, will you keep her spirits up, you know, make out it could all be for the best? I mean, I've tried telling her, but uh, I think it come better from her mates. Yeah, of course, we'll have So, uh, if you've nothing on this afternoon, Martin... <laughs> well, I have, actually, today, Mrs. Oh, I see. Well, whenever. Ah, you leave it to us. Maybe we can organise a, a drinks party, do you? you know, celebrate it doing well and everything else. Now, that'd be great. Uh, and, and don't worry about the money. I'll have a word with Alex if you can get some sandwiches laid on, eh? So, um, when could you make it? Tomorrow. Martin? Yeah. It's both, so. Oh, right, you're on. Really Thanks, cool. lads. No problem. Has uh, she uh, give it any thought yet about um, which poly she wants to go to? Well, yes, as it happens, she's <laughs> talking about Brighton. Brighton? Is she trying to tell us something? Don't get further away if you try. Well, so like it. See you, love, and thanks. Yeah. Thanks, lads. See you now. Brighton, eh? Never seen a few moves there. Ah, she will shout. Ah, she must have a different fella for every day of the week. Huh? Your mate. Hi, Audrey. Terra! 
Oh, I don't. I don't think you've met uh, Audrey's husband, have you? Hey. Oh no. Alf. Uh, Alf. This is uh, this is Terry. Pleased to meet you, Hi. Terry. I, th I think there's, uh, I think there's a table free over there. Oh, you go and grab it. I'll get the drinks. No, no, no. I'll uh, I'll order the drinks. Uh, go on, go on before we lose it. Come on, I can't have you buying me drinks. No, no. I don't said it all. They're not paid for them. Go on. <laughs> Perhaps Alf and Audrey would like to join us. Uh, no, no, thank you. We're just off. Well, I thought we were supposed to. I don't want to be a cosplay. Oh, right, I'll get me out. What do you have to bring him in here for? I was hoping that Mike Baldwin might be here. Well, he's not, but we are, me and I. I could have been very nasty. Yes, well, just stop worrying. I'll never give it another thought. <laughs> Come on, drink up. Look, I thought we were supposed to be stopping here to have well, some dinner. Look, I'll make you some at home. I shouldn't have brought you in the first place. Not in your delicate condition. Come on. Ta See you later, Alma. Yeah, right. Bye, Audrey. Bye. Yeah. Terry. Right. Hey, who was that? Sorry? That Terry. Alma's new boyfriend, isn't it? I mean, she was hoping to prove to Mike Baldwin there are plenty more fish in the sea. How do you know him, then? Uh, I met him at the cafe. I mean, you know what Alma's like. She gets a new fella. She has to show him off, like <sighs> other women show off a new frock. Where did she meet him, then? Oh, some wine bar or other. Gee, talk about a quick worker. It's only two minutes she was asking you to go out and cheer up over this ballroom business. Well, you know what Alma's like. I do, I. She'll get her fingers burnt one of these days. You mark my word. I mean, fancy picking a fella up in here. Wine bar. Some women never learn. Come on. Mrs. Barlow. Just the person I want to see. Listen, can you stand in for me for five minutes till Gail gets back? Do you know, after what you did to me at dinner time, Alma, I don't know how you've even got the nerve to ask. Well, there's no harm. No, no thanks to you. What do you have to bring him into the Rovers for? Honestly, my whole life flashed before my eyes when that Terry let on he knew me. Well, what did you tell Alma? Oh, that I'd met him in here, didn't I? Oh, well, there's no problem then. No problem. I'd what if he'd mentioned last night, Dave? Oh, come on, credit the man with a bit of sense. Oh. I mean, he's not daft enough to spoil a good thing, good is he? Good thing? What do you mean, good thing? All the four of us. Th Look, I have told you, now that is finished, right? I don't want to see that Dave again as long as I live, and it wouldn't be the end of the world if I never set eyes on Terry again either. So next time you see him, you can tell him that and all. Ah, Councillor Barlow. Hi. Mr. Reynolds said to go right in as soon as you arrived. Oh, right, fine. Um, you couldn't tell me what it's about, could you? Sorry, if you've no idea. Oh, I haven't a clue. He just rang up and said he wanted to speak to me straight away. If it's any help, he did receive another phone call just before he told me to get you. Oh, I see. From your husband. About time too. I was beginning to wonder where you got to. We've been playing football. Yeah, we went to the park after a bit of the bath because we didn't fancy going out to Paulie's, oh, did you? Oh, Nicky, you are naughty. And after Martin was good enough to take you swimming <coughs> as well. Martin wanted to go as well. <laughs> I'm sure he did. Well, don't be surprised if he never wants to take you swimming again. You will, won't you? Yeah, of course I will. <laughs> well, you don't deserve it. Give me that. Go upstairs and get a good wash. Okay, Mum. I don't mind, you know. Honest. Thanks. <clears throat> Look, before he comes back, there's uh, something I want to say to you. About like last night. I didn't want you to get the idea that I was trying to take advantage of you. You know, you've been on your own. Well set up. Set up? Me? You know what I mean. So I don't think it was like that. I'm not some Jack the lad, you know. It was one kiss, Martin. Yeah, I know. What I'm trying to say is. Well, it didn't seem wrong. Well, not to me. Not at the time, anyway. No, well, it didn't to me, neither. I needed somebody last night, Martin. Somebody to lean on. To 
to understand. Oh. Well, at least you don't think any worse of me. As a matter of fact, I was beginning to think what you must wonder of me. Mm -hmm. Can I ask the stage for tea? <coughs> <laughs> well, I hadn't thought about it, but he's very welcome to if he wants to. No. I've got to go to work tonight. Got a couple of things to do before then. Oh, go on. Martin said no, Nicky. Some other time, maybe. Eh? Yeah. That'll be uh, Pauline with Sarah Louise. Oh. Well, I'll let him in then, on my way out. See you. See ya. Hello, girls. Ah, ah, still business as usual over there, I take it. That's what I said. I take it it's still business as usual with you, breaking up all the muck so you can make a name for yourselves. Well, I'm still in the business of informing my readers about matters of vital interest to them. And I'll tell you something that'll be vitally important to you. You print one word out of place about me and that rag of yours, and you'll be reporting your own bankruptcy. Go your drink while you can. Because when folk round here find out what you're really up to. Unless, of course, uh, you'd like to put the record straight yourself. Oh, that is. Just the map. Let's see, what can I do for you? Well, it's more of a matter of what I can do for you about this factory. There's been talk, you know. The girls are not happy about this assurances that Mr. Baldwin's given to them. They're not happy at all. Really? Well, actually, uh, actually, Percy, I have had my own suspicions. So you got the matter in hand? As a matter of top priority. So if you do happen to overhear anything... Say no more, Kenneth. I'll be seeing you. Thank you. Good night, Percy. Good night. Hi. Not working late tonight, then? Well, I don't have any need to now, do I? Not in the sense that you mean, anyway. Really? I should have thought you'd have every need. I'm not with you. You do surprise me. I would have thought the phone line between the town hall and your office would have been white hot this afternoon. <laughs> I've not been in my office this afternoon. Look, if something's happened that I need to know about. I had a phone call this afternoon from Peter Reynolds. He wanted to see me. No, demanded to see me within the hour because he'd had a phone call from you. That's right, yes. Yeah, to firm up a few facts about what may be going on over the road, but it uh, wasn't very helpful. <laughs> I don't see what that's got to do with you. No, you don't, do you? Well, I'll tell you. Peter Reynolds was concerned because you were trying to get him to firm up your story all right. Not just to the point of putting words in his mouth, but to practically ramming them down his throat. <laughs> it's not exactly the easiest of men to deal with. No, especially not when he's been betrayed. Because from the questions you were asking, it was obvious to him that you got your hands on facts that were only known to a handful of people. Still don't see what that's got to do with you. I happen to be one of those people, Ken. And Reynolds made it quite clear to me where he reckoned the leak had come from. Oh, I take it you put him right. Oh, yes. I put him right. Because I've had enough of this, Ken. More than enough. And I've only got myself to blame for letting it go on for this long for being naive enough to believe your empty promises, for thinking that you might just care more for me than you do for that blasted paper of yours and your blessed principles. Yeah, well, it's finished. It won't happen again, I promise you that. Because Reynolds knows it wasn't me this time and it never was. He knows he need look no further than that little two-timer under his own roof. You've told him. I didn't have a lot of choice, did I? And if I've got a single regret, it's only that I didn't do it weeks ago. Do you know what you've done to her? Oh, no, Ken. Don't try to make me feel guilty, because it won't work. I, for one, will not lose one wink of sleep over it. Your dinner's in the oven. Spoon, seven letters. Stirrer. Doesn't fit. No, it doesn't. Did I say something? No, love, it's all right. Listen, um, 
Why don't you go upstairs and get ready? I'll take you on that shopping trip. I promised you yesterday. That's if the phone doesn't go, you mean. Look, I promise I'll ignore the phone. Really? Do you want to go or not? All right, keep me cool. I'm on my way. Can we go to Jeans and Beans? Yeah, if you like. I'm still here for some shoes. We'll see. Great. Oh, I'm glad to see you're keeping some of your promises. Don't you, of all people, start to preach at me, Ken Barlow. And don't ever use our daughter to score cheap points again. Can I go and see my gran? Oh, you're after sweets, aren't you? I just want to see her. <laughs> Come on, then. Your granny will never forgive us if we go past without seeing her anyway, will she? In you go. Look, love, I shouldn't have involved Tracy. I'm sorry about that. No, you shouldn't have. But neither should you have shot Wendy Crozier. Oh, look, Ken, I don't want this. Not now. Well, we've got to have it out. I mean, you know you've put a job in jeopardy. It, what about my reputation? If you'd kept your promise and stayed away from her, none of this would have happened. But people have a right to know the truth. So you could have gone to Jones. But, oh, no. We don't want to upset an important advertiser, do we? The search for the truth's not that important. Well, it's no good having the truth to print and nowhere to print it, is it? This is a free sheet. And without advertising, it's a dead free sheet. Ah, well, rest in peace, then. Is that what you really think? Yeah, why not? Well, I have to think it's important to have people like me around, to break the monopoly and to provide an independent comment on what's going on. That's a matter of opinion. <sighs> Look, love, I didn't want to go to Wendy Crozier and I didn't want to break my promise to you, but I had no choice. I'm a serious journalist, Deirdre. Serious opportunist, you mean? Oh, thanks. Well, come on, ask yourself, Ken. Why are you doing all this? I mean, is it really in the public interest, for the sake of truth, or is it all just ego? Is that what you think? Well, Ken Barlow, editor, sounds pretty good, doesn't it? Ken Barlow, public guardian. Look, what I am is unimportant. I only want the truth. Do you? I've never printed lies. Oh, yeah, you've printed the truth all right. Even when it's put paid to worthwhile schemes like the hostel we never got, because you'd alerted public opinion so successfully. <laughs> Ironic, really, you know, when you think about it. I mean, if you'd not used that story in the first place, there wouldn't be a bloke like Jones hanging about, waiting to change the landscape, and all of this could have been avoided. I'm ready. Right, let's go then, shall we? Right. Shouldn't you be tucked up and snoring? Well, I did try, but the gas leak won. What gas leak? The one they're digging up the road outside our house for. Mm. Cuppa? Mm, please, yeah. Ah, oh, can I have one of these scones as well? Yeah. Sorry. I uh, <clears throat> thought I'd kill a bit of time and take Nicky out this afternoon. Bit difficult. Oh, all right. Well, it's, uh, it's only that he's with a friend today. Thanks for the offer. Sorry, it's, uh, there's always tomorrow, if you're not too tired. OK, you're on. Ah, I saw you coming here. Mm. Hey, you won't forget about tonight, will you? Why? What's tonight? That's typical. You know what? I knew you'd forget. The Rovers to celebrate my two Bs. Oh. Not that there's anything worth celebrating, but Rita seems to think there is. Congratulations, by the way. Oh, thanks. I could have done a lot better, though. I don't know how I feel biology. Unless they made a mistake. I mean, they do do that, you know, when you can <laughs> query your marks, but... I'm a bit superstitious like that. I might find out I failed another one. <laughs> hey, Gail, if you fancy coming tonight, you're very welcome. Oh, thanks, but uh, I'm tied up tonight. Oh, well, if you change your mind. Oh, it's like a six-form common room in here. Oh, listen, you won't forget there's a delivery this morning, will you? Well, it's all nice then, are we? Oh, well, I certainly hope so, Jenny. Otherwise, I've been to a lot of trouble for nothing. Mind, I mean, Terry's full of surprises. That's what I like about him. I mean, what's life without a few surprises, eh? <laughs> Hey, they say this new fella's half her age. He's practically a toy boy compared to mine. <laughs> I mean, it's pathetic, really, isn't it? I mean, a woman her age chasing after young blokes where she does. I hope I never get that desperate. <laughs> well, Ken, it's Wendy. Wendy, I've just been trying to ring you. What's happened? Sorry for ringing you at home, but I thought you ought to know. Someone's found out. 
been suspended. Are you all right? Yeah, shell shock, that's all, but it wasn't pleasant. Look, we ought to meet. Um, can you make the usual place at 12.30? Yeah. Right, OK, I'll see you there. Yeah. And Wendy, don't worry, we'll, uh, we'll sort something out. Yeah. OK. Bye. He's got a cheek, I'll say that for him. What do you mean he's got a cheek? Well, standing there, bold as brass, supping up, and he's putting us out of work. Vera, do you think you're bold? You're going to do it dirty, you'd be hanging around like he is. Hey, you must have heard, yeah, that's all. Yeah. Did he say out? You do say out. Dodgy damn. Vera, what transpires between my customers and me is confidential. Oh, so I did say something then? Well, let's just say we were discussing the relative merits of large cars. Well, that's it, then. He's after buying the rolls. Listen, did he say what about selling up? What am I, super grass? No, he said nothing, and as far as selling up's concerned, no, she would. No, to please me better see that place levelled and 30 Irish navvies drinking in here, mm. afternoon and night. Well, that's charming. I never thought she'd break a promise. Can't blame her, really. Anyway, I knew the risks. Give it a day or two, they're bound to reinstate you. This is just a scare tactic. I don't think so. Well, they won't sack you. <clears throat> the union wouldn't allow it. Oh, I've got to see the rep this afternoon. I'll come with you. Don't get involved. <laughs> I am involved. If it wasn't for me, you wouldn't be in this mess. What I did was my decision. I did it for my reasons. There's too much secrecy in this world. I hope things aren't too bad for you. At home, I mean. Oh, don't worry about me. It's you we've got to think about. Maybe I should have settled for my typewriter on a holiday in Tuscany once a year. Yeah, but that's not you, though, is it? Oh, I don't know. I thought it was. I could just see myself in 30 years, retiring to a little garden flat with several cats. <laughs> I can't see you settling for that. Never know now, will we? You won't forgive me for this. You've no idea how frustrating it can be to be at the beck and call of middle-aged men who think they're international statesmen and they've never even read a book. Do you know what I'd hate? I'd hate them to think I did it lightly, because I didn't. I don't like breaking trusts. Nor do I. So, here I am without a job, and here you are without a source. Mm -hmm. You're not sacked yet. I just hope it doesn't make things difficult between you and your wife. You're a remarkable person. Did you know that, Wendy? Maybe I'm a fool. I'm my own fool now. <coughs> oh, do you know, Audrey, I've traced all the way home to cook him a meal. Well, heat him a tin and he's not even there. So I went down the garage and there he is, he's under a cow. He's got no time to talk, let alone eat. Mm, if you're expecting appreciation, sweetheart, forget it. Oh, I don't know why he thinks his time is much more important than my time. Men always think they're more important than us women. I mean, why do you think I'm stuck here like a lemon, waiting for him to come back and relieve me? Oh, I've just seen Mr Roberts. He's chatting to some bloke outside. Is he now? Ooh, we'll soon put a stop to that. They need keeping on their toes, do men? <laughs> Do you know, that's where I do your Kevin good, a bit of competition, waking his ideas up. What, another block? Oh, it can work wonders, kid. It really can. <laughs> oh. Well, it's an old Give me that. Get on the till. The master, have you seen a ghost? Oh, worse than a ghost. Have a look out the window. What for? No, just go on. What can you see? Oh, uh, Mr. Roberts is talking to a block. And what are they doing? They're coming in. Oh, God! What's the matter? Audrey? Uh, I'm just pricing up, Alfie. Audrey, never mind all that. Sally can do that. There's something I want to talk to you about. What we have here is a complete treatment. 
from your vitamin and mineral supplements through your planned calorie control 10 day diet and your optional extra, the skin and hair care systems. You see why I needed your advice? Yes, Alf. Oh. One wash with this, Mrs. Roberts, and the hair looks great. Even under disco lights. I don't make a habit of going to discos, Mr. Sparks. You should. Oh, I bet you'd look a treat. Oh, no, she, she's not one for discos in Audrey. <laughs> or maybe you've a mate who's a bit more adventurous then. Oh, she has that. Well, please don't be afraid to handle the goods, Mrs. Roberts. Or if you've got some questions. I like my customers to get to know me before we get down to the real business. Ah, oh, yeah. Not seen you around here before, though. No, well, it's not my usual line. I'm more pure cosmetics as a rule, you know, chemist department ah. stores. But then, with all these interesting diets, I just thought the smaller retail outlet might be interesting. Yeah, what well, do you do, right? I'm always interested in anything that'll bring in fresh custom. Actually, I have to make a confession, Alf. You don't mind if I call you Alf? No, no, everybody else does. Well, my being here is not exactly accidental. How do you mean? Well, to be absolutely truthful, Audrey and I are old friends. Old friends? Well, we've met before. Oh, where did you meet? I called last week while you were out. But as I'm a gentleman, a gentleman never takes advantage of a lady on her own, I agreed to pop back sometime and see the master. Well, you never mentioned it. No! Well, it must have slipped my mind off. I mean, I'd love to think about it. Always on the go, the ladies. So, how do we stand? Audrey? What? Are we going to have some or not? Yeah, yeah, I think right. so. Good. I'll uh, get some from the car. I should just pop home and get some lunch. Oh, that's a good idea, though. Hey, he seems a nice fellow, that. It's funny you didn't mention him. Oh, well. It's just another salesman, isn't it? <laughs> what the hell do you think you're up to? Just doing my job. <sighs> How did you find me? I didn't. Pure accident. That was blackmail in there, you know. That was good sales technique, Audrey. Well, you were supposed to be a travel agent. Yeah, well, I must admit I get about a bit. Yeah, a bit too much for my liking. I was on eggs in there. Joke. You made a right fool of me. Just a bit of fun, that's all. I thought you liked a bit of fun. You did say two beef burgers. It's just so much to keep me going. I had time to turn around today. Did you, mate, this call? Nah, car, but that is a my line. I'm talking to the proprietor. Is <laughs> wrong? Well, you know I'm not one to make complaints, but in my opinion, this scone's been dropped. Oh, you mean it's a dropped scone? <laughs> no, I do not, and I thank you to keep your childish comments to yourself. I mean, at some point, it's been dropped on the floor. Not to my knowledge, Percy. Oh, well, I dare say the thing's one here that you don't know anything at all about. What's the problem, exactly? Well, it's, uh, apart from me, the wrong colour. Wrong colour? Yes. It should be a nice creamy colour, should have scored. I've made thousands in my time. But that's not the complaint. The problem is, it's gritty. It's a whole meal scone, Percy. Good for you. I'll be the judge of that. Look, if you don't like it, I'll gladly change it for something else. But I can assure you it's exactly as it should be. Hello, ma'am. Give us a cup of tea, girl. Now, wait your turn, please. I'm being served, if you don't mind. I'll bring it over, Percy. Thank you. And I'd like a proper one this time. And please, don't be all day with it. I've got other things to do. He is nothing to what I've had to go through. Where's Alma? She's out with a fella. Oof. I'll give a fella to an ass here. That is the last time, the very last time I do her a favour. What's the problem? The oh. problem is I still haven't got Miss Cole. Hang on a minute, Percy. I'll see to him and then he can tell me all about it. too long, do you? You can always turn them up. I mean, that's fashionable, isn't it? Pity about the other shoes. Well, if you want my honest opinion, I like them better. Do you? Yeah. But right now, I am more interested in a cuppa. Hi, Dad. Like oh, the gear? Oh, yeah, yeah, I like those. They're very nice. We got five knots off these. Mum spotted a flaw. Oh. She's good at that. Yeah, well, uh, I'll just go and put this lot away and then have a shower. Dead sticky after all that shopping. <laughs> That's the second time today you've done that to me. Yeah, well, maybe you deserve it. Tracy doesn't. This is her home as well, you know. Wendy Crows is being suspended. Oh, I see. So that's it. Yes, it is. Well, you said she would be. Don't you care? I didn't say that. Well, I think you should, seeing as you're responsible. Look, Ken, I've had a busy day. 
I've been trailing round half a Weatherfield looking for clothes for Tracy and I'm bushed. I do not want another row, and especially I don't want another row about Wendy Crozier. Yeah, but it's all right for you, isn't it? You've got a home and somebody to provide an income. She's probably going to lose her job. Look, Ken, I said I didn't want to talk about will it. Will you listen? No, I won't. Just let me get on with the dinner, will you? OK. Where are you going? Out! Don't bother with a meal for me. I won't need one. Come on, Nicky. Time for your bath. I'm watching telly. Adverts. Waiting for Martin. Martin won't be round tonight. Why not? Because he's going to a party. Why can't we go? Because it's a grown-up party. Anyway, Martin has to get on with his own life. <laughs> I don't know who this fella was, but if looks could kill you know, he'd be dead because something's going on there. Look, just forget about work, can't you? You're supposed to be here to relax. <laughs> You're a fine one to talk, you, aren't you? You are. You're always talking about work in your cars. Am I always talking about work? Yeah, Jenny's here. Hello, Hi. Hiya. 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 Okay. Right, Alec, can we have the champagne and whatever the lads are stopping? Hey, what's all this? Uh, it's a bit on ice. All afternoon, as you ordered. Hey, go easy, Rita. I'm not leaving yet. Well, it's not the real thing, but it's the thought that counts. There we are. Thanks, Alec. <laughs> there we go. Take them down there, love. That's it. You can read for ten minutes and I want that light out. All right. Oh, they look lovely, Alec. Yeah. Thank you. We'll do our best. Oh, we're going to miss her, you know, Alec. Hey, Ken tells me that you're off to Brighton. Oh, yeah, my tutor seems to think they'll take me. It's a bit pacey, Brighton, isn't it? Brighton, yeah. Well, I hope so. <laughs> are, these, uh, are these for general consumption, I'm then? I'm sorry, Mr Sugden. This is a private party. Well, somebody's done a good job. <laughs> yes, well, you won't like them. They're all milk. <laughs> The prawn volleyball looks especially nice. Ah, well, Mr. Sugden, no one will notice. Go you think on. I could? Yeah, 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 yeah. I might have a sandwich after as well. <laughs> Enjoy yourself, Percy. Oh, hello, Mr. Percy. Oh, yes, very nice. Thank you. I better be on my way. Very yeah. <laughs> <laughs> worried there you are. I'll be getting up and off. <laughs> right, I'm off now, love. Well, you, do you have any of food or anything oh, yet? Oh, I've had what I want, love, thanks. Are you sure? Mm. Yes. Oh, well, thanks for all this, Rita. Oh, it's my pleasure. Now, listen, you all enjoy yourselves, OK? Oh, thanks. OK. okay. So, uh, well, I'll be making tracks and all. Well, where are you going? Up in gas. Eh? Hey? Well, I've got to earn a crust, haven't I? Well, I thought you had tonight off. No, no, no such luck. <laughs> so, have a good time. Don't get drunk, OK? Bye, now. Oh, bye, Martin. See ya. <laughs> he's been really quiet tonight, hasn't he? Oh, I think he's really upset. About what? About you going. It's a long way, Brighton. Nothing to do with me. Not that I blame you. I missed you. Hey. Hello. You can I come in? Yeah. Cheers, sir. Slack a youth club in here. Yeah, well, you should know if anybody's on. Now, look, you do realise I have sacrificed my night out with Terry just to buy you a drink, don't you? You do realise that you're lucky I'm even speaking to you after what I've been through. Yeah, well, I didn't know he was going to seek you out, did I? Oh, well, no, he didn't. It was just a coincidence. Mind you, I won't be pushing my luck again. I shall stay at home in future. Oh, what, like, uh, like you're doing tonight? It's different, isn't it? Yeah, there's nobody worth chatting up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, girls. I'll save you the clothes. Oh, thank you. <laughs> ah, hello, Ken. Just yourself, is it? That's right, Alec. That's right. Been putting the paper to bed? Uh, something like that, yeah. Uh, gin and tonic, please. Yeah. Oh, right. It's uh, lonely at the top, is it? Do there. Party no good, then? No, it was okay. Just thought I'd pop in. Not taking pity on a poor old widow woman, I hope. <laughs> I don't think Jenny meant you when she said that. I mean, she, she did invite you to the party. Well, I suppose I should take it as a compliment. Mm. At least she didn't think I was past it. You're a long way from being past it, as far as I'm concerned. Thank you, kind sir. 
You don't have to say that, you know. Don't want you to. Fuck, it's a bit awkward for me to say this, but... Well, I'm going to have to say something. I mean, I can't just ignore what happened the other night. Oh. I don't think it was just one-sided. It wasn't, I told you. So, why does that leave us? Martin, are you sure you want to take up with somebody like me? Why not? A widow with two kids. What does that matter? I like the kids. And they like you. They're not just the kids, Martin. There's me mum and Alf. There's uh, Don and Ivy I have to consider. Think of their feelings. Especially Ivy. Brian was her son. What's she to think if I suddenly take up with you? I'm not footloose and fancy free, Martin. I've got responsibilities. I can't just go out when I want. I can't even do what I want. I have other people to consider. Other people who come before me. People who'd have to come before anybody else. Oh. I see. So it's not as simple as you think. No. Seems not. I think I'd better go. <clears throat> well, stay and have your coffee. No. I'm sorry. But you're right, Gail. Thoughts about it like that before, I suppose. So, uh, no hard feelings then? Hmm? No. Well, I'll see you in hand. Nikki, go back to sleep, love. There's not in there. No, Martin's not here. Nobody's here. I'm on my own. I expected your office to be knee-deep in cement and nude calendars. You know, airy-chested builder. Secretary keeps it up to stretch. Oh, secretary, eh? As good-looking as she is neat and tidy as she... It's the mother-in-law. Oh. Right. Let's go and do the dirty deed. I don't see anything dirty in you shoveling a small fortune into my bank account, mate. Glad you mentioned brass. I've been thinking. It's a bit excessive at a clapped-out little factory like yours, don't you think? No. Didn't think you would. Your car or mine? You can show for me, seeing I'm the one who's being skinned. <laughs> oh, damn, I'm blast this rotten machine. What the heck's up with you this morning, dear? You've made a rat butcher everything you turned your hand to, and it's no good keep blaming it machines. Well, I'm fed up, if you must know. What is it this time? My life. Vera, it's too late for you to be fed up with your life, love. Your life is set in concrete. There's no way you can change it now, so just get on with it, will you? That's a bit defeatist, isn't it, Ivy? Yeah, why can't I change it? I've got one foot in grave, you know. How, Vera? Tell me how. Well, I don't know. Wimp pools. Oh, my God, they reckon that religion's opium of the people. It's not, you know. It's rubbish, that. It's football pools. 
Do you know the only time I ever saw my dad smile was when he won football pools? Mind you, it was a very brief smile. He only won four and eleven pence. You're not going to win Little Woods, Vera. Your Jackie's not going to turn into Prince Charming overnight, so just make the best of it for all the sakes, will you? Well, thanks a lot. I just felt a bit fed up. Now I feel like ending it all. Oh, I'll have a vanilla. A bit early for your tea break, isn't it? Thanks. By about four minutes. Watch it, you lot. Where's, uh, where's Emily? She's gone to bank. Bank, eh? Ooh. Must have just missed her. Oh, Dawn? Mike, it's done. Signed, sealed, delivered. No. No, not yet. Young love, isn't it sweet? But doomed. Well, it might not be in their case. Hey, do you remember your first bowl? Oh, very vividly. Mm. He had red hair and freckles and was a whiz on the bike. He used to balance on it, <laughs> dead still for minutes on end outside our door, and then just ride away. We never spoke. Do you know, mine used to offer me his bullseyes to pay doctors and nurses with it. We were only six. <laughs> hey, look, look, enough of this. Harking back to you past the first sign of old age. Isn't that right, Percy? What's that? What, your cuppa? Uh, yes, please. I mean, you shouldn't wallow in the past, should you? Maybe not, but when the past was paradise compared with the present, it's hard not to. Ah, yes, but we were talking about our sexual past, weren't we, Gail? I mean, are you? No, I'm not. Well, I mean, you must have had one, Percy. I mean, if you were normal, I mean, you are normal, aren't you, Percy? One of the reasons why the past was paradise compared with the present, women didn't talk dirty. Oh, dear, do you think I've upset mm. him? He's the last of the breed, is Percy. Yeah, the breed that never swore in front of a woman but gave them ten kids and a tub full of dirty washing every day. Gail, wait for it. Do you think, do you think I could bunk off later, you know, when it quietens down after dinner? Only I think Terry might be free. He bunked off yesterday. Yes, I know. I no, did. Alma, it's not fair. Oh, come on, Gail, it's not my fault that you're living like a nun. Look, I'm sorry I said that, but um, anyway, see how it goes, honey. Oh, brilliant last night, just brilliant. Oh, did you win, then? At last? Well, uh, he was third, but you think he won the Mons or something, <laughs> the way he's been talking and acting? Hey, it's bronze, though. Silver next, then. Da -da -da, gold. Da -da -da. Like Casey, wizard on wheels. Yeah, well, it was a fluke, a one-off. Oh, he's a very jealous person, is Kevin, you know? Spoils him. Jealous? Are you? Do me a favour. Listen, I quite fancy a go at driving this car. Oh. I reckon I'd be pretty good, like I'm at most things. Fancy it, do you? Yeah. Yeah, well, <gasps> you'll have to join the queue, aren't you? Where have you sprung up from? <laughs> Made the mistake of popping in and got me slaving for him as usual. Yes, and you love it. Go on, I'd miss it. So, who else do you let drive this car then? No me. One. Does she? Ask me. Oh, do you? Yeah, I'm going to. Oh. Mm. It's no good walking off Kevin Webster. That's not going to resolve anything, is it? A touchy subject. <laughs> Obviously. It's great, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Yeah. Bowie's looking for you. Oh. Yeah, we told him you'd gone moonlighting on a tripe stove. She'll be clocking you one of these days, Vera, nettling like that. Well, you've got to do something to keep your spirits so. up. Oh, God help us. I wish you'd snap out of it. Yeah, I hope we can make that drink as well, too. <laughs> of course I'm paying. Don't I always pay? <laughs> yeah, I know I'm lucky. Cheers. See you. Deb Baxter. I gathered. Still trying to make a precarious living out the rape tree. Really? I believe you wanted me. I did. Ivy said. So. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've uh, sold out to Maurice Jones. When? This morning. It's a wonder I didn't see it at the bank when I was paying his check in. You've actually completed? Unless his check bounces. Oh, this lot is his lock, stock, and battle. So it's goodbye, Mike Baldwin, and hello, Jones the house. Do you know what you're doing, Mr. Baldwin? Yeah, I'm getting out from under, getting rid of a lot of worry and aggro. And you know what? I already feel 20 years younger. But it's been your life, Mr. Baldwin. 24 hours a day of your life. And no matter what you say now, you've enjoyed it. It's fitted you like a glove. So I start a new life. As what? I don't know. I haven't decided yet. Anyway, whatever it is, there's no rush, is there? The price I got. 
When are you going to tell the girls? Oh, uh, this afternoon. No point in spoiling their lunch hour, is it? Assuming, of course, they're sad to see me go. I'm sure quite a few of them will be, Mr. Baldwin. Sad to see you go. Provided everything's above board, everything's what it seems. Well, of course it is. How could it not be? What do you want? Uh, did you say you were paying? No. Ah, uh, well, I'll have a cup of tea and a plate of chips then. All right. Hiya. Yes, Martin. Um, I'll have a plate of chips, please. A bacon sandwich, one tea and two straws. How many teas? Go on, then I'll have two. It wasn't my idea to come in. She dragged me in off the street. Martin, there's no need to behave like I'm out of bounds. I know that. I think I'd find it easier, though, if you were. So, <sighs> entertain me. It's an Englishman, Irishman and a Scotsman. Uh, no dirty jokes, thank you. I never get them. <laughs> <laughs> you say something. I like the mood, Jen. Oh, you're feeling sad and blue, aren't you? Because I'll soon be off to Polly, leaving an aching void in your drab existence. Oh, yeah, that's it. Well, you'll just have to think of me as an exotic butterfly that let on your windowsill for just a brief moment in time. Oh, well, it's very poetic, that. Uh, do you mind if I join you two? I wish you would, Curly, because it's like talking to a brick wall talking to him. Ah, well, he hasn't got the synchronon, has he? Not like me and you, being intellectuals. You did right there, Curly, yeah. I've just been for a walk on Red Wreck. Have you? Yeah, running a few ideas and observations through the finest computer the world has ever known, the brain. Really? Yeah, and you know what I observed? Well, two things. He isn't working, is he? Who? You know that Martin, uh, what's his name, that used to work here? No. Well, he hasn't even a job. Quite yet? Oh, no, Alva. Oh, please, Gail. Listen, I'll do you a favour. I will do you 20 favours. All you've got to do is ask me. Thank you. You are a diamond. What are you? A diamond. Alma! Not one game of cricket have I seen played on the Red Wreck this summer. Not one. Plenty of footy, even though it is out of season. Now, what effect is this having on the fabric of British society, eh? Uh, excuse well, me, excuse me, Marty. Do you think I could have a word with you for a minute? Yeah, of course you can. Uh, do you think, do you, think you could stand in for me for a couple of hours? Stand in for you? Yes, well, you know, work-wise, only I've, I've just had this phone call about uh, an old aunt of mine, and she's apparently very poorly at the moment, and it's touch and go with her. So I would, I would just like to see her, you know, before she... Uh... So will you? I mean, I mean, it's not as if you're new to the job. I mean, you have worked here before, haven't you? I can't, no. No, listen, I'll pay you. I mean, of course I will, handsomely. But then you'll be able to buy your lady friend here a proper meal instead of just a plate of chips. I've got things to do, though. Not for an old lady. Oh, come on, of course you will. Look, bring your butty. It's on the house. Oh, all right, then. <laughs> well, that's charming, that is. Yeah. Now, where was I? Oh, yeah. The effect of youngsters not playing cricket on the fabric of British society. You get on all right with Martin, don't you? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I thought you did. <sighs> yeah, I'll love. Hey, listen, what are you doing to your Vera? I mean, nothing, what? Well, she's as miserable as sin. Oh, is that all? Let me tell you about Alvira, Ivy. She is a naturally discontented woman, always has been. It's a tragedy, really. She's got everything going for her. <coughs> See, she's got me for a start, hasn't she? Oh, yeah, yeah, she has, yeah, yeah. Look, Ivy, I have known husbands go out on a Friday night, come back on a Monday, first thing to do is thump the missus because they haven't got the breakfast ready. Now, me, I never get back later than two, three o'clock, never, never. You are a prince amongst men, Jack. You're right, I believe. You're right. Oh, sorry. Workers first. Thank you. My pleasure. I wish we hadn't come in here. Why? I just feel uncomfortable. I don't know why. I don't. I've not got a thicker skin as you have. Well, you're in business now. You better grow one. Otherwise, it'll be a short career. Mike, pleasure to see you. And your, uh, your friend, who is looking younger and more attractive than ever, I may say. Yes, you may, Alec. I'll have a large scotch, a gin and tonic, whatever you want. And, oh, a packet of my cigars. Oh, I'll have an Irish with you. Why not? <clears throat> is it my imagination, or do I detect an air of exultation? You're not celebrating something, are you? You too? Just living, Alec. Just living. Oh, I'm 
It's not an easy thing to get right. I think I have, Alex. Now, you're not going to spoil today for me, are you? No, of course I'm not. He's uh, perfectly entitled to sell his factory if he wants to, Emily. You don't know anything, do you, Deirdre? Know anything? Such as? Oh, I don't know. I can't put it off any longer. Um, excuse me, ladies. Why? What have you done? I'm just warning everybody. Oh, go on then, Emily. Warn us. Mr. Baldwin is calling a meeting this afternoon of all the workforce. So if anybody was planning a shopping hour, it would be advisable to postpone it. Just thought I'd warn you. A meeting of all the workforce? That's a bit unusual, isn't it? Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. It'll be bad news, it all I says. Like a wage cut. Or worse. Well, what could be worse than a wage cut? Could be shutting up shop altogether. Oh, if Alma can do a disappearing act, then so can you. Mind you, she's welcome to disappear with Terry. <laughs> He's only got one thing on his mind. Lust. Oh, come on. Let Martin take over and come and help me spend some of Alfie's brass. Do you know I keep telling it? It's got to get Mildred lying in that bank. Now, you wouldn't mind, would you, Martin? What's that? If I spirited my beloved daughter away for an hour. Oh, so that ain't by me. Right. Yeah, but if we had a sudden rush of customers, you couldn't cope on your own, could you? Now, that's true. I'm not very good at coping with sudden rushes. It's out of practice. Right. On your heads be it, because I am a danger to myself when I go shopping on my own. Not to mention Alpha. Eh? Ta-ra. 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 You could have gone with her, you know. Well, fancy watching me man cut a sway through Weatherfield dress shops again. Hmm. Fair enough. I think we've earned ourselves a cup of tea and a bun, don't well, you? I thought you'd never suggest it, so if Madam will sit down, Sir will do the business. Oh, no. Sir will sit down. Madam will do the business. Oh, why, his head didn't sound right. <laughs> oh, not too strong, not too weak, now. Uh, could I put the catch on for ten minutes? Only my feet are killing me. What if Alma comes back? That's oh, all right. It's a cheap old lock. All right, then. All right, then. Uh. <laughs> it's a funny way you finish up, isn't it? I only come out on an errand for me mother. Is that where you're supposed to be? On an errand for your mother? Oh, yeah. What's the errand? I've forgotten now. <laughs> <laughs> Ready when you are, Mr. Baldwin? I've been ready a long time. Right then, everybody here? I mean, have you checked the toilets? Because that's where most of you seem to spend most of your time. Yeah, well, I've been waiting till I go home lately, Mr. Baldwin, because there's never any paper in them. <laughs> Glad to hear it, Vera. Everybody is here, Mr. Baldwin. Good. Well, this won't take long, because I haven't got very much to say. <laughs> so I'll get straight to the point. You've, uh, got a new boss. A new boss? What do you mean, Mr. Baldwin? What do you mean you've got a new supervisor? I said boss, governor, proprietor. Look, will you stop talking in riddles, Mr. Baldwin? I thought I was speaking as clear as daylight. I've sold out. This isn't my business anymore. Well, whose is it? A bloke called Morris Jones. You've probably seen him here once or twice. He's a local, um, a, a businessman. I don't believe this. You've not sold this place. It surprised me, too. Today, everything. What, including us? Yep, you went along with the assets. Oh, I like flaming cattle. <laughs> well, I've heard worse news, and that's a fact, a lot worse. Yeah, well, I thought you'd be heartbroken, Vera. Right, well, that's it. The king is dead. Long live Morris Jones. I'll be in the pub tonight if any of you fancy a drink, and I would like to thank you for your long and devoted service some longer and more devoted than others. Right, meeting over. Don't stand around rabbiting. Uh, hang on a minute, Mr. Bowen. Yes, can I help you, Ivy? This uh, Maurice Jones fella, he's taken uh, everything over. The factory is as is. As from tomorrow. tomorrow. I see. Yeah. Now, don't any of you make any thank you speeches or sing for he's a jolly good fella because, well, it would embarrass me. Yeah, it embarrasses us and all. <laughs> 
Well, that were a big help there. So what do you expect? We've treated us over years like dogs. Anyway, you were wrong, weren't you? Do you know I feel quite perky all of a sudden? How does that song go? This could be the start of summer at Bay Club. Hello, you two. Mum, can I have a drink of lemonade? Yeah, help yourself. Thanks for picking up Nicky for me, Philip. I like doing it. I mean, even if I didn't, it's better than them four walls. Do you know, I'll be glad when Percy comes back on duty to escort me across the road. I feel like Lady Muck every time he stops that traffic for us. <laughs> You're incorrigible, <laughs> Philly. And how was Sarah? Did she be all herself? Well, I took her to this party for the kids and she disappeared. <laughs> took two neighbours to find her. Sarah Louise tells me we have to put a cage around you. Oh, yeah. Mm, are you still here? Yeah. Ah, yeah, you must like this place. Yeah, well, Alma hasn't surfaced yet. Oh, I don't know. You put up with her. I really don't. Hiya, Nicky. You all right? Martin, can we go to the bath? Ugh. No, Martin's got other things to do other than escort you all over the place. Ah. I'll take you out another night, so we'll... Phyllis, will you take him round to me mam's for me? Tell her I'll pick him up from there when Alma decides to show her face. Of course I will. Come on, Ben. I haven't finished my lemonade. Well, finish your boots. Get it down, yeah. There you go. I don't know where I'm putting it. Come on, Mabbit. Come on. What night are we going to the bath? I'll give you a bell. When? On your way. Come on, Nicky. So long. I expect you'll want to be on your way as well. Well, I'll mind. How much do I owe you? Ten are all right? Thanks. Thank you. All right. And if Alma decides to play hooky again, you know where to find me. I think so. Mm. I always did like working here. Well, I always enjoyed having you here. Mm. Oh, Gail, Gail, don't say anything. I know what you're feeling, but it was not my fault. We went up to Feathers Terry and me over at Parkley, and what happens? We have a puncture. Then we find the spares flat as well. Uh, well, I think I'm going. Oh, are you going? Yeah. Hey, well, love, thanks for everything. It's all right. What's it all then? Tara. What's it <laughs> Did you, uh, did you pay him? Yeah. How much? Kind of, that was a bit on the generous side, wasn't <laughs> it? So I suppose he earned it. I think so. Do you know he could be very useful, that lad? Terry rang your Brian's garage in the end. Oof. Did they take their time? So, what are you going to do with all the loot? Put a girdle round about the earth? Aye. Shakespeare for a world cruise. Hamlet, I think. Haven't decided yet. Yeah, would well, it make me an offer? You take the shop, I'll take the world cruise. <laughs> I'll bear that in mind if you ever get bored. I mean, I shouldn't think there's any chance of that. Yeah, I can think not at all. He's just retired. He's got a bank full of money. He's got a beautiful new home. He's got a lovely new girlfriend. It's what they call paradise, mate. And you've got your help. Cheers. 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 <laughs> Hey, Baldwin, I've left the kids jumped up at bath, he does that. No, sorry. Mm, wondering, typical. <laughs> Same again, Jack. I'd rather pay for my arm and take his brass. I wouldn't trust him an inch. Who wants to trust? He's sold out to somebody else, hasn't he? You know you're getting worse than you are, have you? Listen, you just might have jumped out of the frying pan into the fire. Why, how do you mean? Well, your new boss could be a carbon copy of Flaming Baldwin, or even worse. But it's the Baldwin, it's not possible. Anything's possible at Rag Trade, Vera, as well you know. Well, you'll see tomorrow, won't you? <laughs> Trust him to put boots in, just when I'm feeling a bit happier. Well, I've never felt happy about all this. Hey, you're going to let her drive it in the race. She's going to wreck it for you, Kevin, she will. Like the time you wrecked Mrs Fairclough's car that time, oh, you mean? That was a you? pure accident, Sally, over which I had no control. There's no such thing as a pure accident, Jenny, if you don't mind me saying so. The driver must be to blame for something, even if his only error is the failure to react quickly enough to the car's error, if you see what I mean. No, I don't. Well, look, a car veers off the motorway, the steering's kaput, but he's still got the brakes. But because he fails to react quickly enough, what you get is a multiple death crash, but not a pure accident. Oh, shut up, Curly. Oh, someone getting cold feet, eh? Wishing they hadn't been so clever. No, I'm not, actually. I'm going to race that banger, Kevin Webster, better and faster than even you. <laughs> Hello. I thought you might turn up. Hmm. You did the right thing, turning up. Come here. Okay. <clears throat> Aren't you 
you supposed to be at work? Oh, not feeling well. You look all right. I'm fine. Didn't last long, did it? Playing it cool. No. Felt like a lifetime. Good morning. <laughs> Mix a bowl of cornflakes. Well, I've got to keep my strength up. And I didn't want to wake you, because you look zonked out. No staying power, that's your trouble. <laughs> See you, Martin. Anybody. There was somebody there. Hey, I mean, it's wage bandits. Well, they must be hard up if they're after my wage. Well, they better keep the bloody hands off my child and die wedding mug. That's all I can say. Hey, hey, hey. What's going on? Well, we can't get in. The gate's locked. Are you sure, eh? Josie reckons she saw somebody moving about. I did. Hello? Hello? Well, call it two quid. Done. Yeah, I know. Ta da. Milk. Yeah, it looks like it. Strike, do you think? I wouldn't be surprised. Our new boss, they'll be trying it on, trying to screw in for as much as they can get. We can't go on strike, can we? Us company chair people. Oh, that's true. Yeah, I'll tell you what, though. There's times I wish we could go on strike. <laughs> How did we get round to talking about me, ma'am? Hey. <laughs> Ta -ra. Ta -ra. Come on, watch me tonight. I'm not begging you to. In fact, I'd probably drive better if you don't come. Well, I'll see. Depends if I get anything better to do. Oh. All right, off. Now then. See ya. What's happening? They're on strike. Hey, you up there, do you know what time it is? He's deaf, whoever he is. Yeah. Well, happen this new gaffer's changed the starting time. Oh, I like oh. he's put us on nights. Yeah. Well, you never know with bosses, do you? They do some right diabolical things. I mean, look at Baldwin. Yeah. Hey, do you know what I'm beginning to think? What? I think we're being locked out deliberate. No. Oh. Why would he do that? Well, I don't know, do I? No, he'll have overslept. It'll be late coming in. I bet he was out on booze last night. Whose is that big posh car then? Now look, come on up, these bleeding gates! Oh, we will back them down! Take it easy! Good morning, everybody. Morning. What a lovely morning it is, too. Well, what happened to you? You buy yourself a new pair of knickers or something? It's just the way I feel, Alma. I'm allowed, aren't I? To feel good for a change? Yes, well, as long as you give me fair warning, that's all. You know, that's typical of you. Who, me? Yes, you. You've got a very sarcastic attitude to life and people. It spoils you, the lady. Does it? Listen, if you could be a bit less sarcastic and not so ready with the repartee, I think people would take to you more. And you were at it again, weren't you? At what? Talking dirty in front of a gentleman. Mentioning knickers. Percy! By the way, Percy, what are you doing sitting here when all hell's broken loose in Coronation Street? All hell? Mm, a strike at the factory by all accounts. A mob milling round the gate. A strike, eh? Well, they'll be wanting somebody to arbitrate them, won't they? One side or the other will. Right, good morning. <laughs> Percy A. Cass. <laughs> What's the matter? I was just going to murder him when you interfered. <laughs> Sorry. Would you say that I had a sarcastic attitude to life and people, and that I was too ready with my repartee, and it spoilt me as a lady? Did Percy say that? Yeah. Do you know he's a very good judge of character, is Percy? 
I've always said that. Gail Tilsley, you are in a very skittish mood. Is it still no sign of anyone? No. Hey, do you know how? About what, Vera? About what's going on in here. I bet you're flaming well do, only you're not letting on. I bet you are acting on instructions. All right, Vera, keep your hair on. Now, look, Emily, are you sure this is that bloke Jones's car? I'm absolutely sure. Hey, somebody's coming. Oh, 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 What's it look like, love? I'm locking this gate behind me. Why? Why? That's what she flaming said. Why? Said it were deaf, didn't I? I'm locking it to keep it secure. Keep thieves and vandals off my property. Oh, and does that include us? I'm sure you're not thieves and vandals, love. No, we are not. We're your employers. Why are you locking us out? Yeah, good question. Mr Jones! Factory's closed. Closed? For how long? Well, I don't think I'll be opening that gate again, love. Oh, he's bluffing, he must be. What is there to bluff about? Exactly. Yeah, you do know something, don't you? Vera. Oh, what are we going to do, Ivy? We can't just let him get away with that. No way. Look, come on. Where are you going? We're going to our house for a powwow. Rest of you stop there. Make sure that nobody else gets in, and especially nothing comes out, right. like machinery. Okay. Yes. What's the state of the parties then, strikewise? It's a lockout for us. A lockout? Has there been no talking, no arbitrating? Well, they've been waiting for you coming, Percy. Well, I'll soon sort this out. I once talked some men out of a mutiny in old Catholic camp. Oh. Ladies, the name's Percy Sugden. Oh. <laughs> you couldn't just make us a pot of tea, could you, love? Just to calm his nerves. Kettle's on. Listen. Do you mind telling me what you propose to do about this little lot? Well, that's what we're going to discuss now. Well, you know the man you want to see about it, don't you? The man who's really behind it, Baldwin. Uh, he sold the place to Jones, Don. I don't care. He knew the conditions. He knows what Jones is going to do. Baldwin's the man to see. Definitely. Well, I agree with Don. If there's been any jiggery poetry going on, it's all down to Baldwin. It always is. I agree and all. You don't know where he is, do you, Emily? Um, at home, I presume. Only presume? Hey, he ain't slipped you a big fat check, has it, to keep us off his back? Vera, I won't tell you again. Falling out amongst ourselves is not going to help anybody. And besides, Emily's in the same boat as us. Yeah, Queen Elizabeth to our canoe. I know what I'll do. I'll give him a ring, see if he is at home. Oh, yeah. Do you know what number? Yes, it's, uh, it's seven, one, five, two, oh, nine, six. Obviously, he's not in. Yeah, or he's just not answering. Hiding, keeping his head down like the rat he is. Well, I thought we'd go round there and flush the rat out. Yeah, good idea. Josie? Why not? I want to find out what's happened to my job. Well, I'd rather not go, Ivy. I mean, it's not that I'm against it, but <laughs> it's just not my cup of tea. Mm, frightened you'll hear voices raised, are you? Find it a bit common for you, eh? Come on, Vera. Well... Tea up! Oh, what is the picture across there, Emily? I honestly don't know. I'm as shocked by all this as anybody. Really. There you go. Uh, Martin hasn't been in, has he? Uh, no, he hasn't. Still, I suppose it's early for him, isn't it? He gets very tired out doing nothing, does our Martin. <laughs> does he? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> did, I, did I hear somebody mention Martin? Yeah, Jenny did. Well, did he say yesterday that he was coming in today? No. No, but I mean, he usually does, doesn't he? Yeah. Well, I mean, if he does come in, and he does stand in for me, and I could get an appointment. Lot of ifs there, Alma. Well, I might just make myself a hair appointment, because I need me confidence boosting after what that old devil said to me. Do you know, he has punctured my ego, and a girl needs her ego like she does a lip. So, could you sort of talk nicely to him? Aim them sexy eyes at him.
Right. Hey, listen, do you know the number? Yeah, of course I do. Oh. We've got a card school going on in there, darling. Well, it says everything, doesn't it? Where he lives compared to us. No wonder Baldwin always has a grin on his fizzog. Excuse me, are you looking for Mike Baldwin? Yes, we are. Yeah. I'm afraid Mr Baldwin doesn't live in these flats now. Oh, I don't live here. Well, where does he live? Well, he's moved. Who are you? Actually, I'm the new owner of his flat. Uh, what? Make way for the workers. What do you want, Miss Love? Uh, bedroom, please. Well, uh, where's Mr. Baldwin now, then? Do you mind if I ask... Oh, just room? tell us where he's gone. It's uh, just that we used to work for him. Used to, that's right. And, uh, well, we want to contact him, you see. Oh, I see. Well, I've got his new address somewhere. If you wait a sec, I'll see if I can find it. He'll have opt it abroad. He will. <laughs> Hello, coffee, please. Where's the symposium, then? The what? You know, the discussion group, Martin and Jenny. Yesterday, we had a very interesting and profound seminar on the place of cricket in the British modern youth culture. Did you? Hmm. Well, uh, Jenny was in earlier. Martin hasn't been in yet. Ah, well, no doubt they'll gravitate here eventually. They're like me, you see. They've got a lot of time on their hands and a veritable cornucopia of philosophical problems to solve. You know, sometimes I feel... Very ancient Greek. Is he, um, Is he all there? It's just a bit eccentric, that's all. Like most of us. Oh, I'm eccentric now. I'm as well as everything else. Alma, you're paranoid. Do you know that? It is very easy to be paranoid when you are a single woman approaching 35. Yeah. How old? All right, 36. No sign of Martin yet, is there? No. This is all very posh and all. Yeah. All pay for out of our sweat. I'd like to burn the bloody lot down. Well, which way do we go? Shall we try this way? Ah, cool. What did I tell you? It's not here, he'll be in Casablanca or somewhere like that for now. Yeah, with our money. Oh. Hello? What are you doing here? Do you live here? No. Though I don't see what business it is of yours. Is Mr Bowen in? Uh... Oh, he's in all right. Could we see him, please? Uh, there's no question of can we see him. We're going to see him, no danger. What's the trouble? You've got hey. visitors. Ah, oh, Ivy, Vera, what can I do for you? God, you're smart, oh, man. a minute, Marge. Keep it cool. That's very good advice, that is. I'll ask you again. What can I do for you? He's locked us out. He shut the factory. Who has? Who do you think, Mr Baldwin? Jones. Are you sure? Yes, the gates were locked tight when we turned up this morning. We've had it from his own mouth. He has shut it. Well, I... I don't know what to say. Well, I'm surprised you can't think of something to say, Mr Baldwin, cos you must have known about it. I sold him a commercially viable unit. Oh, and what does that mean? A going concern. Liar. Here, here. Don't call me a liar, Vera. When I left that factory last night, it was operating. What it's doing this morning has got nothing to do with me. Oh, I see. You've collected your brass in that city. No responsibility to us. Who helped you to make it? It was my factory. I built it up. I sold it. End of story. It is not. Yeah. What about our money in lieu of notice for a start? Yeah. Who's going to pay us as redundancy? Then see Jones if you want money. He bought the factory. You lot along with it. That says everything then, doesn't it? We come along with the machinery and the light bulbs. That's a pity Maurice Jones can't put us up for sale. He probably will everything else. All I can say is, um, I'm sorry. I've... Well, it's not good enough. Somebody owes us a lot of money. Then see Jones. It's... Yes, and we're going to get it and all. You can't just chuck us on to scrap heap like a lot of old wellies. You are your mate. Then see Jones. It's down to him. It's nothing to do with me. What? Sorry. That's what we're going to do now. 
I thought it was just a strike. No, oh, they're over there now, taking machinery <laughs> and stuff. One of the girls tried to stop them, they brought a copper. You can see what it's done to my lunchtime trade already. It's an unmitigated disaster. Well, I'm going to lose a bob or two on my barn cake for my fancies. We can all have a lot of difference at our house, you know. I just hope our hero's got the nonce to get down that job centre first thing this afternoon. You're torn, aren't you? Go on, admit it. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. You want me to come in case you drive brilliant? But you don't want me to come in case you make a mess of it. I don't care one way or the other, actually. Oh, right then. I won't come. Right. Well, on second thoughts, I think I might come. Oh, you're pathetic. Do you know that? Look, I just don't crush you with Fanjo here. I don't think he's competent enough to teach you. He'll pass on all his bad habits. He'll pass on bad habits. You can't even hold the steering wheel right. I wouldn't let you drive me the length of the street, Kevin Webster. You've got no faith in me, have you, whatsoever? All I am to you is some weak little woman. I'm going to show you, pal. <laughs> Didn't know we doing it, mate. Yeah, suppose I am a bit. <laughs> can I have a dozen light hours to check out in there, Jack? Yeah, of course oh, you can. Yeah. Hey, who, who are they for? The women. They're having a confab in our house. Hope Alvira's got paper these. No, I'm paying, I'm paying. No, so, what, so what's new? Baldwin and Jones <laughs> are only trying to do them out of everything they're entitled to, that's all. Never. You're not going to get the compensation? <laughs> yeah, I'm glad Mum is not my god. Like it is Baldwin. Ah, me and all. Oh, yeah. Me too. We'll get to know what you'll see if we don't. Don't be daft, Vera. We're entitled by Law of England. Law of England? What's Law of England ever done for the likes of us, lot? It's for your riches, the Law of England. What's got into you all of a sudden, Vera? You sound as though you want to give up already. Well, I know you feel, Vera. I feel the same. Do you know you work hard all your life in a factory? You get yourself a little car, a bit of independence, well, so you think. But you haven't really, cos rats like Baldwin can come along and blow it all to smithereens and not lose a wink of sleep over it. Hey, buck up, Vera. This is not the 1930s. We'll get what's due to us. Come with me. Hey, uh, it's one apiece. Oh, thanks, love. Hey, uh, your Jack's worried you should be down at the job centre, Vera, this afternoon. Well, trust him to think of something like that. He's only being practical, Vera. Practical? He's worse than his father was when he buried his wife. He only asked for the brass sandals back off the coffin so he could flog them down at Rag and Bone yet. <laughs> I don't believe that, Vera. <laughs> well, it's true. Hey, you know what my mum said to me on my wedding day? She said I'd rather be handcuffed to a billy goat than wed him. She were right and all. <laughs> we should give over a pair of you. Come on, then. Cheers. 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 And to hell with all bosses. Here, here. here. And we are not going to give up, are we, Vera? No, are we echoes like? Yes. Do you know, it's been like a dentist's waiting room in that shop today. You'd think Alfred would lost all his customers instead of just a couple of dozen at the most. I mean, most of them won't desert us all together. Mm. You know, I think I had a lucky escape with Mark Baldwin. I mean, if he can turn his back on his loyal workers like that, he might have done the same with me. Well, he did, didn't he? You're not the most tactful person in the world, are you, Audrey? She's sensitive, isn't she? <laughs> So, I've been thinking, dear. What? Well, I don't think there'll be any good in going out with Alfie tonight, so if I can uh, persuade him to babysit, you and me can go for a quiet drink somewhere. What do you say? Oh, I don't know, ma'am. Oh. Mum, where's Martin? I don't know, is he? He said he'd take me to the bath. Oh, you're not the only one he's let down, love. He's let Gail and I down and all, isn't he? Yes, well, he, he does have other things to do, Nicky. I will come with you tonight, ma'am. Oh! Good, well, you've saved me life. Do you know, I'd have gone into a coma listening to Alfie moaning on all night and scribbling figures on bits of paper. Right, come on, my darling. Tea time. Say goodbye. Ta-da. Bye, darling. See you later. Bye. Bye. Oh, what a day. You know, if a day is a page in your life, I wish we could have ripped this one out. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 I get the drinks too. You found somewhere to sit. This is heavy. What do you think then, Martin? Hello. Hey. You know, about my concept that man should return to the Stone Age to save the planet Earth or not? 
He's not listening to you, Curly. He's got a moody on, haven't you, Martin? He had one on yesterday as well. Come on, then, let's interrogate him and find out what's casting shadows on his soul. Right, name. Give over. Name. James Bond. Happy? Oh, thank, thank you, you, Mrs Barlow. And may I say, what a pleasure it is to see you in here again. Not forgetting you, of course, Mrs Bishop. What's got into it? He's touting for custom, isn't he? With the factory closing down. Oh, I'm sorry, Mrs Bishop, if I said I wouldn't bring that subject up. You've been very upset, haven't you, Mrs Bishop? Well, naturally. I mean, losing your job. Well, I tried to find somebody in authority and find out what the trouble was and come up with a solution, but I met a brick wall. Didn't the council know anything about this, Mrs Barlow? Um, well, I'm not sure, you know, with being away. Well, you think somebody in authority would have known and tried to do something. I mean, that's what they've given authority for. When I was promoted sergeant, things are been moving into catering court, I can tell you. If there's anything I can do now, I mean. Oh, thank you. What upsets me most is the girls thinking I'm some sort of Judas, traitor. How are things generally at the CAC? I'm in with Alma. Fine. Is it making money? Reasonable. Yeah. Well, there's more to life than that, you know, girl. Than what? Working and making brass. That's a bit of enjoyment, a bit of social life. Yes, well, yes. I know it may be a bit soon after Brian, but I mean, well, if a chance should present itself, or should I say, an eligible match. Oh dear, noisy as it is. Oh, I thought. I better be careful tonight. Do you know, I'm getting a taste for this. Do you want another? Ma'am, do you mind if we go somewhere else? Right. I just feel like a change, that's all. Oh, right. Well, the uh, white line's supposed to be very good these days. Right, we'll go there. <laughs> Mark! It's going to be going dark. Look, you don't get kept to take you around. No, it's disappeared. It's Sal. She's just bummed off on her own. 